face up. Hold the face up. We're doing it together. This happens. This happens when you're learning. On these next two strokes, you'll be there. Reach for the wall. <laughs> yeah! Full length of the pool right there. Me, Quentin, brave guy who wants to learn how to swim. He's a total beginner and had some tough times. His left knee and back got hurt when he was hit by two cars while working as a state trooper. Quentin is also a police officer and served in the National Guard. In just four days, you'll see him go from sinking to swimming. Let's rock it. All right, Nation, this is Johnny Rocket here with another special video series. Today, we have Quentin in the water. We're gonna thank him the star for his service in the National Guard, as well as being a police officer. We are always grateful for the opportunity to give back to the people who have served our country and this is one of those opportunities. He's a beginner. He's learned a little bit of swimming from the YMCA, as you heard, and he's going to today learn how to get comfortable in the water. We're gonna reteach them some of the things that go un, uh, untaught when you're young about the pool and about how water works and how it's all physics. And it's a lot like being in space. We're also gonna be teaching him how to breathe to the side more comfortably, how to float on his back. Over the next four days, we're gonna have two hours of lessons every single day. And then he's gonna go from before and after and he's gonna be an, a better swimmer. He's gonna be able to, to do laps on his own. He'll be able to go into the deep end, all those good things that we all wanna be able to do, but maybe have to be taught. Hopefully you guys can learn from these videos. If not, feel free to email me or text me right here. You guys can come to Austin as well and get your very own lessons with me in person. If you leave a comment in this video section, don't put an email address or a phone number because YouTube automatically will delete those comments. So if you're trying to get in contact with me, you can follow the text on the screen or you can go to the about page on our YouTube channel and find my email and my phone number there. All right, let's get ready to rock it. I'm Quentin, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here to learn how to swim and improve on my swimming, floating on my back, also treading water, and uh, also improve my, my breathing, and also include my distance. I, I served on the National Guard and uh, for 10 years, and also I'm serving in law enforcement, but also back in February the 28th and March the 2nd, I had a uh, back surgery due to an uh, injury from a uh, DUI that drive with that hit me, so. Now I'm just recovering, you know, getting better. But also, I learned that being in the water, it also, I don't feel the pain that I normally have by moving around or getting up or anything like that. So pool is swimming has been my therapy, you know, getting, I want to improve and get better and also be more comfortable in uh, this day-to-day -day swimming in my life. And how'd you find rocket swimming? Online, and uh, when I first started taking swimming lessons from the YMCA, uh, I started just looking up on YouTube and I came across your channel and uh, been watching it ever since. And I say, I got to run and see him. So I booked my ticket and uh, now I'm down here. They're going to swim. All right, Quentin, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to ask you to do is to get your shoulders under the water. I'm going to show you how water is a lot like being in outer space. Everything that comes above the water takes on about 12 times its weight. So when we swim, we wanna be low in the water. That's gonna matter later too when we're working on breathing to the side. The more you lift up, the less successful your breath will be. But if you stay low in the water, you're gonna be able to take that breath nice and easily without feeling like you're sinking, okay? So everything we do is low to the water. One of the first things I want you to do is pick your feet up off the ground, let them bounce off the ground, you're gonna feel a little weightless. Feel weightless, yeah. Picking your knees up, letting your feet come off the ground. You might have to keep yourself up by pushing down with the uh, your hands in the water. But anything that'll make you feel weightless, good. Now I want you to start moving, traveling in the water where both your feet come off the ground at the same time. Yeah, you feel a little bit weightless and a little bit unstable as well. Totally balanced. It's okay. Good, going back. So what this does is it helps retrain a swimmer's mind to understand what they need to do to be successful in the water. For instance, a lot of people will think that the more or the harder they try, the faster they'll go in the water, when it's really almost the opposite. The more you're able to relax and extend your body line, the smoother and easier your swim experience will be. 
Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, so you said you want to be able to float on your back. I want you to be able to float on your back too. But before you do that, I want you to be able to get water off your face. In order to do that, you're going to go chin in. Good. Then you're going to go mouth in. And then you're going to go nose in. And you tell me, do you get water up your nose when you swim? Sometimes. Sometimes, but not usually. Okay, so it's pretty comfortable. Put the goggles on, we're going all the way under now. What I did just now is just to see if Quentin had any fear of water on his face. Some people have a fear of water on their face called aquaphobia. And that water that tickles their cheeks is very uncomfortable for them and they don't like it. So now we're gonna go all the way under. He's got goggles and I recommend if you're someone who is afraid of water that you wear goggles because it makes the whole experience more peaceful. When you can see what's going on underneath the water, you're less afraid of what's happening underneath the water. Okay? Come up, good. Now when you come up out of water, I want you to start blowing the water away or spitting it away. Because when we grow, when we go from belly to back later, breathing and learning how to breathe, there's gonna be water on your face and you're gonna be upside down. So if you just start inhaling, you're gonna inhale whatever water is still on your mouth, right? So when you come up, you're gonna be you're gonna be blowholing like a dolphin. Mm -hmm. Just to get that water away from your face before you go in. So let's go down again. When you come back up the sun, blow the water away as hard as you can. Good. And then breathe it in. Good. Okay, now we're gonna do three in a row. When you come up, you only get one breath at a time. So it's under, up, <gasps> under, up, <gasps> under, up. Okay, ready? It's okay to definitely spit the water out of your mouth before you inhale. It's not like you have to lower yourself quickly. It's that you have to only take one inhale before you go back in. So it can take you can take as long as you want to spit it out. <laughs> totally fine. Now you're starting to blow as you go in. Blow as you come up, breathe in, and then go under. Go down, come up, blow out. Breathe in, go under. Come up, blow out. Breathe in, go under. Come up, blow out. There we go. There you go. Dude, nice, you got it. Nice, you got it. Okay, so our next step now, is just to see how, you, how, how well you kick. And one of the things I'm gonna test you on your kick is you're just gonna float you can have your head up or preferably, I want you to put your head down and then I'm gonna lift you up with your arms once you get close to me. What you're gonna do, you're gonna push off with the bottom with your arms in front of you and then you're gonna take a deep breath, put your face in the water and kick towards me. All I'm gonna be assessing is whether or not you're kicking the proper way or if we need to take that as our next step. So here's what you'll do. And then I'll be there to pick your arms up. Hey, stand up. Good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help him try to gain uh, some control back over that leg where he's got numbness. So when we kick, uh, or when we walk rather, we walk with our feet flexed. Whether you realize it or not, you pick your foot up, you pick your toes up, and then plant them back on the ground. But when we swim, we don't want stiff feet. We want loose, floppy ankles. We want our feet to be loose and floppy as if we're barely, barely pushing water backwards. So it's not so much as you're pulling water backwards with the back of your leg, and he doesn't do that, he does it just fine. But his left foot is a little bit flexed, and I think we're either gonna have to tell him to point his toes or just help him with this exercise. This might do the trick. Um, but in swimming, you don't want a foot flex because it'll actually cause you to travel backwards. Watch me, it is the most bizarre thing you'll ever see. See, I won't go anywhere. If anything, I'll go backwards. But if I loosen up my feet and let them flop, there'll be no problem at all. It's almost like you want to put oil in some of those rusty parts in your ankle. So here's what we're going to do. We place the kickboard directly in front of him. 
and he's going to start kicking. So he's going to have to lean back a little bit. You're going to start kicking. The kickboard should float away from you if you've got a powerful kick. If not, it'll kind of just stay here, go off to the side. Go ahead, start kicking. Good. And then with that left foot, just make sure that water's flipping off the toes. Good. Stop. Do it faster. Good. Good. Let's take this foot real quick. Does that hurt? Okay. Try pointing. Pointing the toes. That would be flexing. Try pointing. Other way. Good. Okay, now relax. Flex. Point. Relax. Flex. Point. Relax. Now kick with it relaxed. Go ahead. Woo! Nice. You see how you had it there for a second? Starting to flex up a little bit. So point it. Relax it. Kick. Yeah, here it goes again. Toes are much more whippy. So he's got a pretty flexible kick. I like that. Now we're going to put it back on his belly, but I'm going to have him holding the kickboard now. Okay? And we're almost going to be ready for Finn soon, but I want to get him floating on his belly and his back next too. So I'm going to have him on his kickboard. When you hold a kickboard, it's very important that you have your hands at the top of the edge. Or if they've got handles, you can hold the handles. But if you want to hold it at the top edge, not the side, and not the bottom. The only time you would ever hold it at the bottom is if I'm going to give you a drill that requires you to hold it at the bottom. Otherwise, I will never ask anybody to hold it at the side, but rather just at the top, because if you hold it from the side, your elbows will bend and your core will disengage. When I was a youngster, I thought when my coaches said, engage your core, they thought, or I thought it meant crunching my abs together, but it doesn't. It actually means extending your body line. The taller you are, you stand, the more you stretch out your spine, the more engaged your core becomes. Your core is always going to make you balance better. So if you were to fall off balance standing on land, the first thing that would catch you is your foot. Well, that leg coming forward is brought forward from your core. So the more you stand up and the more you feel almost imbalanced, the more engaged your core it will be to rebalance you. So if you hold the kickboard at the top, your arms will stay stretched. Anytime the elbows bend, your core is no longer engaged. Keep the arms fully stretched. The reason I don't like it on the side is because it's easy for people to bend their elbows. Same with the bottom. It's very easy for people to start wearing the kickboard like a hat. I want you to keep that kickboard fully extended, arms stretched. The other thing I want the beginners to do is to breathe. I don't want you to put your face down in the water yet when you're using a kickboard. It's actually more enjoyable to kick and breathe because you need that oxygen to keep firing your legs. Your leg muscles are at least twice the size of your arm muscles. And so they are gonna require twice as much oxygen or refueling as your arms would. So when you're just doing kickboard, don't worry, you're gonna go slow and you're gonna be tired. It's both, it's a, it's a, it's a almost a rotten exercise, but it's so good for you. So that's why we do it. So hands at the top of the board. Yep, head up. I'm gonna keep this kickboard extended and you're gonna start kicking. We're not gonna go to the deep end just yet, but you might have to turn the iPad to follow us. Do you ever feel imbalanced like that? Off, 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 low, off, a little bit tippy unless you have the fins on it then. Smash the water with the top of this foot right here. Yeah. Yeah. Pushing it backwards. Good. Almost there. Stand up. Good. He has a good standing position from when he is finished kicking. This, the dismount that we teach people is to bring your knees straight to your chest. It might seem intuitive, but not a lot of people know to do that. They'll, they'll be on a kickboard and they'll be like, I can't get off, how do I get off? You just bring your knees up to your chest like Quentin did, and then plant your feet straight on the ground and stand up, okay? Now when you're on your back, the dismount is actually like you're sitting up in bed, like this. When you sit up in bed, your hips drop, and then you bring your knees in, plant, them, plant your feet on the ground and stand up. Okay, but we'll get there soon. All right, I liked his body position on the kickboard. I like your kick, we're moving on. That was not, we're not trying to improve that just yet, almost. We got, the, we got that left foot to be a little bit more flexible, but now we're gonna move on to the back foot, okay? We're gonna help you start to feel a little bit more comfortable so that if you ever need a long break in the water, you can just float on your back. A lot of people wanna learn how to tread water. We can also teach you how to tread water, but treading water is not as efficient as back floating. Back floating could save your life, treading water could kill you. 
because it's so exhausting. Treading water should be done for pleasure or if your, your, your rescue is finally nearby and they're about to throw you something, maybe you just want to come up into a tread to grab whatever they're throwing you. Treading water is only reserved for like water polo players or other water sports like synchronized swimming. But for you, when we're on our back, everything is the opposite is when you're on your belly. When you're on your belly, you want your chin down, but when you're on your back, you want your chin up. Now, the other thing that happens on your back that most people don't like is the water will enter your ears and it tickles. It almost feels strange and foreign and it, it kind of is uncomfortable. The reason that doesn't happen on your belly is the way our ear cavities are developed. When you're on your belly and you come up, first off, the water kind of suctions on the way in and then just kind of pops out on the way out. Whereas on your back, you're allowing it to drain in a little bit. And so it does feel uncomfortable. When you come up, you're always gonna feel like there's water in your ears or there's a radio in your ears. But when you're on your back to, prevent, uh, to, um, to get used to that tickle, you're gonna let it settle in, it's gonna tickle, and then you're gonna take a deep breath here, and you're gonna blow it out with some sort of noise. Cause when you make that noise, it muffles the sound and all of a sudden your brain becomes more curious about the sound than it does the feeling. Okay, so if you just start talking to yourself when you're on your back, most people find themselves calming down. It's, uh, it's the weirdest feeling. Okay. So I'm gonna have you turn around. The way I'm always gonna help a swimmer when they back float is by holding their back of their head like a football, not their back. Because if I'm holding their back, they're gonna press down with their hips and sink. If I'm holding their head, then they're gonna press their head back, which is gonna bring their hips up. So if you're an instructor out there watching these videos, I call it the football hold. Always hold the head by the football for back floats. Now I'm gonna have him just lean back as if he's falling asleep in bed and I'm gonna keep his head up. He's gotta trust me a little bit here. Now, I'm gonna ask him to stretch his back out, or stretch your belly out, stretch your belly out. Good. Stretch through your belly as if you're almost arching your back the other way. Good, and stand up. Nice. You got weightless there at the end, a lot more weightless there at the end. You also need to breathe. You also need to remember to breathe. The first time through, you're always gonna hold your breath because you're like, I'm doing exactly what you told me to do. I'm following the directions. But once you've learned it, now we need to bring back the breath. Okay, lean back. Stretch through the belly. Yeah, and then remember to breathe. Nope, stretch up through the belly. Yeah, there you go. Your legs will sink a little bit, let them, it's okay. And stand up. All right, so a lot of you guys have asked me the question of how do I keep my legs from sinking when I'm on my back? If you notice there, I said to him, it's okay if your legs sink. That's because they will sink every time. They will, unless, unless you're kicking. When you're kicking, your legs keep coming back up to the surface. And as you're moving, things in motion tend to stay in motion. So as you begin pushing forwards through the water like a boat, you're gonna rise in the water and then you're gonna stay there so long as you don't change anything, okay? So it's almost as if, if you are complaining about sinking legs when you float on your back and you think you're unique, you're not. Everyone's legs sink when they float on their back, including mine. Now I have trained myself to be able to use my core and my body line to, and my head position to kind of keep them up even when I'm on my back, but it's not something that I expect anybody else to do. I still kind of have to, it's not gonna work. I still kind of have to use my arms to keep them up or I have to use my pick to keep them up. But at some point, you're gonna have to move forward in the water for your legs to stay up. They will sink every time, it's a guarantee. So this time, once he gets on his back, I'm gonna have him stretch his belly out, then breathe, and then I'll tell him to start adding Lynn a little kick. Back. Good, stretch the belly out. Take some deep breaths. Yeah, get your muscles to float. Remember, you're in space. Pretend you're an astronaut, just float away into space. Now start kicking. You're gonna feel them rise. Lean the chin back, I know you don't want to. Chin back. Water, uh, sun's in your eyes, just keep your eyes closed and kick. Kicking on your back with your eyes closed is one of the most scary things in the whole wide world. It's right up there with heights. Stand up, stand up, Okay, good. Look how far you got. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you did good. Let's do it one more time. Good. Nice arch, good job. Don't push the head underwater too far because you'll get water on your nose. It's okay to pick the face up. There you go. Now kick. And this time I want you to kick a little bit faster. A little smaller and faster, but don't break the surface. 
Nice. Nice. Yeah, you're doing it. The chin back, face up. Yeah, you got it. Stand up. Nice. You're doing some of those on your own. You felt it? Yeah, good. <laughs> good. Yeah, as you're able to kick it up, it helps keep the body up a lot more. See how like, even though you saw this video on shore and you thought you taught yourself how to do it, <laughs> it's different when there's an instructor right there helping you and holding you and, and tapping the points where you need to, like every once in a while, I'll put a little knee in his back to remind him to stretch his belly out. That's the advantage of having an instructor. You can teach yourself these things, but don't be surprised if it takes you a lot longer than it's gonna take Quinton to do this in four days, because I'm in. So we're gonna start with the kickboard and the fins so that he can get used to the speeds that the fins provide. And then we're gonna go back into the back floating with fins. And then by the end of today, we're gonna to be teaching him how to roll from belly to back to get his own breath. This will be the foundation of the side breath, okay? All right, so you're just gonna kick out and back for me just to basically the lifeguard chair. I won't make it go in the deep end today. Go ahead. Good, remember to breathe when you're on the kickboard. Stay long and go ahead and kick the feet a little deeper, a little bit wider volume, bigger volume. Up and down more gives you more control. Keep the kickboard, keep the nose of the kickboard near the surface. Good. And when you're kicking, the larger the volume in the, in the water, the more control you have. If it's small and fast, you're gonna feel out of control. If it's big, you're gonna feel in control. Yep, we need balance. So keep the nose of the kickboard up, push off the bottom, start kicking, and make each kick a little bit bigger. Yeah, there you go. Wow, wow, you really picked up speed there at the end. That felt way better, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, the bigger you kick, the more control you'll have in the water and the faster you'll go. Now, as a youngster, we'll teach you to, to kick small and fast on purpose. That's because a lot of children run in the water. They're running in the water, and we're trying to teach them that kicking is not the same as running. Kicking in the water is actually a much smaller operation. Even what he was doing there is smaller, a smaller volume than if someone were to try to run in the water. This. Push the water back, okay? So, as a kid, we'll say small, fast kicks on belly and back. But as an adult, we only want small, fast kicks on your back. Now that you're on your belly and you're an adult, you're gonna kick bigger. More volume, it gives you more control because it engages your core more, okay? You're gonna do this one more time. The nose of the kickboard up, breathe a lot, kick big. That push off where you get water over your face, that's totally um, normal. Start to anticipate it. Stop breathing. Stay nice and point. Stop. I forgot to tell you how to dismount. When you're dismounting in fins, you could do one of two things. One, bring your knees up to your chest and let them linger there for half a second to a full second, just so the fin blades start to come up too, and then slam your feet into the ground. Or roll to your back and bring your feet to the ground so your heels come to the ground first and the fins don't trip you up on the ground. Because when you're dismounting with the fins and kickboard and it starts to trip you on the ground, it's a very chaotic feeling that we don't want. Good, nose up. Good. Good breath, I hear it. Nice big kicks. Yeah, you're looking good. You're looking very balanced controlled that. So now we're gonna roll him back to his back. With the fins on on his back, he's gonna find it way easier to float, way easier to, to move and to stay on his back without water going over his face or without sinking. Watch this. Cool, head position's perfect, strips the belly. belly's perfect, now start kicking. When you're on your back, you do want to kick small and fast, and you want to keep the kick just below the surface of the water, as if you're oiling the surface. So it doesn't want to—you don't want to be too high, which is perfect. You're not too high. You're you're just below the surface, if not maybe a tad deep. And stand up. When you're on your back, you don't want to kick so big that your knees and feet start to break the surface, because if you're kicking too big, you're going to cause the water to get too rough and it might go over your face or it just might cause 
an unpleasant, imbalanced experience. If you keep your feet just below the surface of the water and then kick to the point where it looks like the water's boiling, that's perfect. You want the water to look like it's in a pot boiling, that's the perfect kick with the toes right there underneath the surface. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That applies in swimming more so than you would, than you would think. If you are kicking the water straight back, you're not gonna go straight forward. You would think you do. But when you're kicking water straight back, the way that the water moves, it's gonna roll off your feet upwards and you're not gonna move forwards. You're probably only gonna feel yourself starting to sink. In order to move forwards in the water, you have to give an equal up kick down as you do with the kick that's coming up. So the kick that goes down and the kick that comes up should feel like you're giving equal amounts of effort towards. Okay, so it's kind of like the scissor, the, the ab exercise where you do scissors with your legs. You should feel that every time you kick, you're pulling and pushing with opposite legs, opposite directions, pulling and pushing. Gotcha. All right, let's see if you can kick up just as much as you kick down. Whoa, you got way lighter. You got way lighter. Get the face up, I'm gonna let you go on your own. Get the face up, pull it up towards the sky. There you go, like a half inch, there you go. Yes. Stand up. Yes. When I'm holding him by the head like I taught some of you guys to, his head will go weightless when he starts to do it the right way. As soon as I feel like I'm not holding him up anymore, now I'm gonna start to take my hands away slowly just so he doesn't get panicked that I'm leaving him. And then I'm gonna tell him before I do, I'm gonna tell him, okay, I'm gonna let go for a little bit longer now because you're doing really well. I'm not holding you up anymore. You're doing all the work by yourself. Once you get to that point where that person's head is light, they're doing it. You need to reward them, you need to encourage them, you need to help them f remember that feeling so that they can do it on their own when they're not with you. The next step for important is to actually bring your arms down by your side. You're gonna start to paddle the water away too, like you're pushing it away or waving goodbye to your feet. That what this is gonna do is it's gonna help keep your body positioned. You're gonna feel like, whoa, I can keep my chest and my belly up way easier. Okay, so when you're redirecting water backwards or down with your hands too, you don't even need your legs. I can do this with just my arms, but when I add in the legs, I'm gonna feel like I'm an actual swimmer. I'm gonna feel pretty good about myself. I'm gonna feel like I can move through water as much as I want, as long as I'm okay. Good, so now you're using your hands too. Looks good. Doesn't have to be more, it doesn't have to be robotic out there, subscribers. It can be fluid. See how Quentin's doing it really fluid? Because he's using the natural instincts of where is where he needs to push the hands in order to keep his body up. Take it up. Good. Your hands to direct me. Here you go. Hey, I'm still here, just so you know. Get the knees a little deeper in the water, keep going with the feet. The knees are coming up kind of high, you're gonna slosh water over your face, and you're there. Wow, you're on it. You're doing it all by yourself, you're light as a feather. <laughs> yeah, you felt like good. He's, he's coming in, he's, he's developing his relationship with water. He's learning on about pretty much how to be in space. He's becoming more and more weightless in the water because he's like, okay, water does keep me up. Most people out here, we think that water is pulling us down and sinking us and the deep water even more so, but that's not the case. Water exists. It's our, it's our job to develop a relationship with water. Water is not going to pull us down or push us anywhere. It's us, right? So we're going to take deep breaths always to keep lungs in our air so we stay above water so we don't drown. And we're going to be using our hands and our feet subtly, very subtle just to keep yourself afloat and to move yourself around. That concept goes all the way into when we start learning freestyle and breaststroke. The relationship you have with water makes a difference. If your relationship with water is still chaotic and it's, it's spiteful, then get to an instructor, help, have them help you figure out ways to calm down. I know that there's not a, you know, an unlimited supply of great instructors out there. Again, if you want to travel to Austin, I'd be happy to help you out. We also do online lessons where I chime in from videos you've sent me and I show you what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. And then I'll send you on your way with some workouts and some new instructions on what to film next. But we're going to have Quentin do this a couple more times. Take a look.
Good. Face up. Face up. There you go. You might need to use your hands to keep your face up. Good. You'll see that the water level is right around his goggle line. That's perfect. Right here between the goggle and the ears is where you want that water line to be. Stand up. Good. As soon as you feel water start to come over your goggles, beware that the water is about to go over your nose and your mouth too. You're starting to push it down too deep. So when the, the chin up is an interesting concept because chin up makes it feel like you're pushing your head down, but that's not what we're doing. You're picking your chin up and then if you are someone who's pushing their head down farther, then you need to be someone who now picks their face up a half inch into the air, okay? Don't be pushing it so far back that before water goes over your nose and mouth. Yeah! That's all we got. Good. Stretch your belly out. Breathe deep. Good. Chin up. Belly stretched. It's getting tired. And stand up. Good. I think you were just trying to be more relaxed. You were going slower and I thought you were getting tired. You were just trying to be more relaxed. I love it. Slowing down in exercises is A-OK. -okay. If you're learning how to be relaxed, if you think that all swimmers are out here training at, at their full speed all the time, <laughs> you're wrong. Right? We're, we're constantly learning how to take less strokes when we swim across the pool or how to use less kicks to get across the pool in the same amount of time. We're always trying to make it easier on ourselves as swimmers. Uh, many adult beginners, when they go in, especially if they've never had a swim lesson until their adult age, they go into water thinking unless they're giving 100% effort, they're not going to be able to accomplish what they're being taught. That's not true. Oftentimes, it's actually the opposite. You kind of want to Calm down a little bit, see how easily you can do it with how little effort you could do it. And then maybe you start to put forth a little more effort on the right parts, like the pull or the kick. Okay. One more time through. Good, push off. Got it. He's got it. Stretch the belly out. Small body line, sits great. Yep. Anytime you pick your face up, also remember to stretch your belly out. Yep, because that the opposite happens when you do that. You pick up your face, usually you're, you're, you're tightening your core to do it. And then you figure it out right away. You're starting to gain the instincts. Good. Instincts are helpful. Unfortunately, in water, though, you, you'll all find that instincts tend to mess you up. Instincts, when you first get in the water, are the opposite. They're lying to you. Water bends light and muffles sound. It's, it's a great deceiver. Uh, but once you learn some of the, the tricks of the trade, then the right instincts start to kick in. Go ahead. Whew. Yeah, you don't need to be there. smooth. Swim taller, swim taller. Stretch your belly out, swim taller. Kick a little faster too. A little smaller, a little faster. Stretch the belly out. And you're there. Okay, so now we're gonna start teaching Quentin how to go from belly to back to get his own breath. Of course, I think most of you know this by now, we call it the pineapple. We call it the pineapple for no particular reason other than uh, when I was uh, when I was younger, I watched this show called Psych, and they had this pineapple hidden everywhere in every episode. It was a good show. But um, the other reason I like it is because whenever you're teaching certain concepts, if you can name them, you're oftentimes going to help a swimmer learn the process faster. Because what you're doing is you're summing up the whole process in a one word or a couple of words that is memorable and, and interesting or fun. And for me, I like to use the pineapple. I'll also to call kids their head the coconut sometimes. Um, so the pineapple, in order to accomplish this, you're gonna be on your belly and you're gonna need to kick. You're kicking with your arms in front of you as if you're holding on to an invisible kickboard. When it's time to roll to your back, you're gonna elbow the air and then slap the water. So watch me as I demonstrate it for you. Okay, I'm gonna start on my belly. I'm gonna kick a little bit of ways and then I want you to watch my elbow. All 
All right, so now Quentin's gonna try it. The first time he tries it though, I'm gonna be there to protect his head from going underwater. So a lot of times when people first try the pineapple, they'll do the roll and then the face will get a little bit wet and they'll stop. I'm gonna be there first couple of times just to keep that from happening and then he'll realize what he needs to do on his own to prevent it for himself. So you're gonna be on your belly, arms stretched out in front, and then I'm gonna go like this underwater. It means roll. Okay, ready? Go. Good. Breathe here. Stand up. Stand up. Water in the nose or no? <coughs> this happens. This happens when you're learning. If this is you, if this is happening to you, don't feel like you're not learning it or that you haven't figured it out or that you're never going to figure it out. This is unfortunately part of it. We try to prevent it as little as possible. I'm not out here trying to say that when you learn something, get ready to drown half your lungs, but that this will happen maybe, you know, and it happens less and less as you learn. Okay, so the way to prevent this from happening is while you're turning on to your back, <sighs> give me a big old blow out your nose. It's probably still gonna go in, but then you're gonna be able to clear it out and keep going, as opposed to being like, I need to stop. Okay. Arms in front, ready, go. Take a deep breath with your mouth, blow it out of your nose. Good. Now bring your arms by your side and kick. There's one successful pineapple. Good job. Good job. Was it as, uh, was the water up your nose as bad as it was before? Good, thank God. Blown out as I was turning. Good, you were blown out as you were rolling, therefore it kept it from going up, as, uh, up your nose that far, good. and stop. I'm gonna help him roll a little easier here. Go ahead and clear out whatever you need to clear out. When you're rolling onto your back, you wanna be moving at a faster pace. So right before I have him roll, I'm gonna make him kick a little faster on this next one. Because when he's kicking and he's moving, his body will rise in the water and it makes the whole operation a little bit smoother. Watch my examples. When I'm doing this, if I do it slowly, you'll notice more water comes over my face as opposed to when I do it fast. Okay, I'll do it slowly first. It wasn't much, but there was some. Now watch when I do it fast. Now watch when I do it fast. Less water will go over my face. Okay? When I'm going faster, I can keep my face elevated out of the water. If you're going slow, especially if you stop kicking on the, on the transition, on the roll, you stop kicking, think, picture a boat. A boat's going at a fast speed and then it slows down. What happens? Droops into the water a lot. More than it would have if it were just sitting still. So if you're going slowly, it'll happen. Something like this will happen. You're not kicking fast enough. Or if you stop kicking completely, disaster will follow. Good. Good, stand up. That was a way better turn. Now, I, I still pulled you and I still cut your head, but did you feel like you were getting it? Yeah, you're going way faster too. Okay. We're gonna be doing this probably half a dozen more times. And if, if you were ever wondering how many times you should practice something till you get it right, let me remind you of what Coach Nick Saban says from Alabama. He says, we don't practice until we get it right. We practice until we cannot get it wrong. Okay, so we're gonna keep practicing. If you wanna know what that magic number is, the best number to use is 21. If you do something 21 times, not only will you learn it, but you'll create a habit out of it. Because in psychology, they've told us that it takes 21 days to make a habit. If you're trying to change the way, I don't know, maybe you don't normally put your clothes away at night or something like that, and you're trying to get better about that or trying to make your bed every day, you have to do it 21 days in a row for it to be a consistent habit. So generally, I'll make kids do this 21 times. Adults, I'll make them do it six to 21 times. Six will be usually my minimum. 12 is a pretty good standard for adults. Once they've done things 12, in a, 12 times in a row with me, they've got it. But when you're practicing on your own, I highly recommend you use that 21 number. Use the number that, that actually will produce a bigger difference, guaranteed. Kick, 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 kick. Uh, and, wow, you're going fast and stop. Nice. 
So I'm also gonna have Quentin use his legs now to help rotate his body onto his back. With the arm, like I taught you, elbow slap, but with the legs, I'm gonna have him not stop his kick, but all of a sudden he's gonna add a really big scissor into his kick while he's rolling or in, in order to initiate the roll. And we're gonna see if that helps using his legs and his arms. Stand up. Good. I know a lot of like dancers out there talk about how important core is, but when it comes to twisting my body, I was never very good at using my core to do it. I always used my limbs to do it easier, but the taller you stand, the easier it'll be to rotate that tight rope onto its side as opposed to a, a loose rope. If you're trying to rotate it onto its side, you're gonna have to rotate one part, then the next part, and then the last part of the rope all the way over until it's rolled. But if it's a tight rope and you roll it, it should roll pretty easily all the way through. Tall, tall. Yep, clear it out. Tall. And stop here. Good job. And stop. Good. Dismounting with fins on your back. <laughs> Sit up in the water, bring your knees to your chest. When your legs are out there like that, they're keeping you from being able to stand up. Bring your knees to your chest, all of a sudden you have more control over your legs. Okay, we're gonna practice this two more times, and then I'm gonna teach him how to roll back to his belly. Okay. If you're having troubles rolling to your back, another tip I could give you to help will be to lower your kick in the water while you're still on your belly right before you rotate. Lower the kick in the water so it's kicking you up towards the surface more and then do the ro roll. You might find yourself fall back into the water or if you kick fast enough, you'll be able to lower your head back in the water on your back. And we're good. Yes. That looks incredible. An amazing amount of progress from being able to, or not being able to roll on his own without me assisting in some way to get his body to come back up to the surface. Now, even after I think we did it 12 times, he's already got it on his own. The power of 21, not 12, 2 1, not 1 2. But when you've got an instructor, sometimes 12 is enough for now, so you can move on to the next step. All right, the last step we're gonna teach Quentin today, on day one, he's made a tremendous amount of progress. We've got him bouncing around in the water, feeling comfortable. We got him breathing with a circular breath, in through the mouth, out through the nose. We even got him kicking a little bit bigger on his belly, a little bit smaller on his back with floppier ankles. Then we got him rolling onto his back all on his own to get his own breath. And then we're gonna teach him how to roll back to his belly. When you roll back to your belly, it's very simple. All you do is take an arm, either one, you'll take it across your body and behind your body. So you're reaching for a spot somewhere between your shoulder and your ear, and you're gonna put your hand right there. That'll roll your body back to its belly very easily. Watch me. Once you've got back to your belly, bring the other arm up to join the original arm out in the superhero position. Okay, whenever you're ready, which arm are you gonna use? Okay, go ahead. And stand right awesome. up. Awesome. So like, I, like you saw, when you roll back to your belly, that step's actually much easier than the roll to your back. And that should tell you something. It's harder to roll onto your back than it is to roll onto your stomach. From belly to back, much harder than back to belly. Oh, he did his left arm that time. 
did your left arm that time. I don't think he had enough speed to roll back. No, I did. Yeah, okay, so right there, he was able to roll back successfully, but he felt like there was some water, too much water around his face and all that. And that's probably because he wasn't going fast enough. Go If he goes a little bit faster like he will in this next one, you'll probably be able to get rid of that trouble if you're experiencing the same thing. Use your mouth. Good. And whenever you're ready, boom, boom, and boom, you got it. Sometimes you will feel like you took a step backwards whenever you add another step on to whatever you're practicing. Like today we're practicing the pineapple and um, how to be self-sufficient with your breathing. And we, add, we just added a step, right? We added the arm back in. Well, now all of a sudden, sometimes when he rolls to his back, He's already thinking about the next roll, so the back roll may not be as successful as it once was before, but the more you practice it, of course, it'll come, it comes back really quickly. He might only have two or three mistakes, and then all of a sudden the back roll will be fine again, and the belly roll will come together. He's only done this three times, and on that one, he did it all by himself, so we're already pretty much there. Pull. But yeah, adding another pull or two into that rotation, it gave him more momentum so he was able to get back onto his belly and back up to the surface a little quicker than he was before. I like that, that's a good step. Kick faster, stretch your belly out, paddle. Legs underwater. Got behind you. My bad. What's up, Rocketeers? Johnny Rocket here. Today is day number two with Quentin. Yesterday, you saw him make a ton of progress. We taught him how to redevelop his relationship with the water and feel like he's swimming in space. We also taught him how to kick with looser ankles. We taught him how to float more efficiently on his back by kicking and paddling slightly with his hands. And then we even taught him how to do the pineapple, which is how to breathe on his back, catch his breath, continue moving, and then roll back to his belly. Well, today we're gonna to be getting more into the side breath as well as some more back movements. The faster I can get him moving on his back, the more breaks he'll be able to take when he trains. He'll be able to swim two, three, four lengths at a time, and then maybe he'll need to take a length just on his back to catch his breath. I'm preparing him to be able to serve himself when he's done with me on these four days. Well, here we go, day number two for two more hours. Hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right into it. All right, Clinton, today we're gonna to start with a little bit of review from yesterday. We're gonna start by just lowering our shoulders to the water. And remember, we always want to remind ourselves our relationship with the water is that it, it's buoyant, we're buoyant. It floats us up. So you can lift your feet off the bottom of the pool and you'll feel like you're just floating in space for a quick second and then put the feet back down on the bottom before your face goes underwater. And people watching out there, this is one of the first things that you should do when you get in. It's simple and it feels awkward. You feel like it's too easy, but simply bouncing your feet off the bottom like this and then leaving them suspended in the water, trying to hold it for a little bit, it's gonna teach you how to be airtight. You're gonna take deeper breaths. You're gonna use your arms to help do it. It's doing more for you than you think. It's creating synapse connections between neurological pathways allowing you to redevelop your relationship with the water. Be at peace with water, feel how soft it is. Water feels so, so soft to the touch. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start to go all the way under and get our circular breathing back. So you're gonna breathe in with your mouth and maybe out with your nose or maybe out with your mouth. It's always in with the mouth. Good. And when you come up, have a little bit of air left over to blow everything away and out of your mouth. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you want to clear all the water out of your mouth so that when you breathe in, you feel like there are no droplets. So it's okay to blow out, keep spitting, get every more bit of moisture out of your mouth before you breathe in. I can take maybe 10 seconds to exhale. All I need is a half second of inhale. Watch me. <laughs> 
And for some of us, that's okay to take that long at the beginning. You're getting used to just spitting all the water out. You'll get to a point where you can come up and you can just start talking like I do, water's dripping out of your mouth and it doesn't bother you so much. But until that moisture in your mouth is comfortable with you or you're fine with it, get it all out. Get it all out. Yes. Yeah. And you're good. Nice. All right. So the next thing I want you to do is the traveling bobs. You're going to go up and down, getting used to creating only a limited amount of time that you have to complete this operation. So you'll probably skip faster and harder. You'll probably breathe in quicker and faster. And it's getting used to a wa little bit of water constantly come around your face. Traveling. Now, if you'll notice, you can actually walk all the way over to there in this pool. This pool is very, very cool. It's 12 feet deep over here. I'm not going to take him into that water. In fact, I'm also going to stay on this side of him as he travels here, just so that he doesn't feel like he's about to fall off this edge into the deepest water. But this water right here in this lower pool that you guys probably haven't seen too many footages of, this lower pool is magnificent. Very big, very spacious. Got a waterfall, rock wall, water slide. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Go ahead, Clinton. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Keep that big breath. Good. Yeah, stop right here. Awesome. You can see every once in a while, he'll start to figure out his rhythm and then he'll be able to go three in a row real quickly. If you're out there and you're trying this exercise and you feel like it's not going well, don't forget that's because I'm here with him. When you're practicing on your own, it's going to take 21 attempts before you feel like you got down well. But if you were to take a trip here with me for four days, it'll be, you'll, you'll make progress a lot faster. But like everything in life, nothing's good. I was with another subscriber recently. He actually lives here in Austin, so I'm able to teach him every week. Um, but we don't record his videos. And he told me last week when I taught him about the spinning, he said that that was the most beneficial advice he had received from me about the breathing. So that's why now I'm kind of more geared towards, I bet you that's the same problem a lot of you guys have, right? I bet you some of the problem is you feel like there's still water in your mouth, and when you breathe in, you feel like you're inhaling water. Well, then spit it out. Maybe make your mouth a little smaller so that the force of that spit is more aggressive. But getting all that water and moisture out of your mouth will give you a lot more peace when you practice this. You'll feel like, okay, now I'm not so panicked. Water in the mouth or in the nose is the worst feeling. No one likes it, not even me. No one gets used to it. So when you're practicing bobs, especially the bubble bobs, also get good at doing them through your nose. So you breathe in with your mouth, out through your nose. For little people, call them booger bobs or boogie bobs. But for older people, and an adult, I'll just say, exhale through your nose, inhale through your mouth. Think of it as the opposite cycle of yoga. Okay? Let's watch him do a few through his nose. Watch this. Good. So you'll see less of a spit as he comes up. That's because his mouth never opened underwater. When he went underwater with his mouth closed, it never opened, so no moisture ever got in. When he came up and blew out of his nose, he was able to just open his mouth and breathe right in. That's the, that's the other advantage of using your nose. So next up, we're gonna review the back float, getting you to start kicking a little bit on your back. Now, yesterday when I had you, I didn't want you to kick right away. We're past that now. Once you get on your back, start kicking right away. I'm gonna kick us back and forth here. I'm gonna be able to rotate your body down there. Just stay in the back floor. It's gonna feel very foreign, but as long as I'm holding you, the, the uncomfortable feelings are okay because then you don't do them when you're not with me and you'll be okay. But when you're with me, if it's uncomfortable, that's okay, I'm here. Start kicking. Good, now remember when he kicks underwater that he's gonna kick small and fast. 
He's not going to break the surface of the water with his knees or his feet. And maybe his big toes, but that, that would be chance. You're going to turn around, stay in your float. I'm going to spread water just because I'm off the edge, but you're not. Feels a little different when I'm starting water, but you're good. Nice job. Start to paddle the hands. I like it. I like it. Good job. He's pretty weightless right now. Even though I've got his hands, I'm not holding him up. He's pretty weightless. He's doing most of this on his own. Keep breathing. Good. Now stand up. Whoa, you got better. Did you practice? <laughs> Did you practice on the after hours workout? No, I just, oh, wow. I mean, just remembered it. Yeah, yeah, you remembered the sit-up. Awesome. He dismounted really well there, sitting up in the water. That was excellent. Okay, we're gonna go again. This time I'm gonna have you have them start moving faster. We're gonna do it two back and forth two more times. So four lengths of this width. Okay? Getting going faster and faster each time. Keep the head up. Pull the face up, I mean. You're pushing it underwater. Pull it up. There we go. There we go. Slap jump. Get speed around. Yep, good left. Trying to turn up. We're gonna talk to you next time. Good. Good. Keep the face pulled up. Good. And let you screw the last yard on your own. We keep the face pulled up. Okay, good. Stand up. Yeah, nice. Excellent. All right, now we're going to get him going as fast as he can. So on that one, I already heard him breathing more because he was putting forth more effort. Once you start going fast, make sure you're taking deep breaths. Oftentimes when we sprint in water, we're going as hard as we can. We'll stop breathing, we'll hold our breath. It's, it's, it's some sort of instinct that we have where we'll hold our breath in order to give more effort. But we don't want that. We don't want you to hold your breath. We want you to keep breathing. And the harder you swim, the more the deeper the breaths should be. And if I turn around one more time, Hold the face up, hold the face up. There you go. Yeah, it's okay for your light hips to sink a little bit more just to keep the face up. Good. Good, I'm gonna turn us. Good. We like, really like. Good. Fast you go, the lighter you are, I love it. Don't bend the knees too much. There will be a knee bend, but it's mostly in the feet. You're fluttering your feet. Yeah, there you go. Okay, stand up. Good. All right, so we've reviewed the back float. Now we're gonna review the pineapple. This time I'm gonna have him just kick on his belly until he needs a breath. Then he's gonna do his pineapple. And we're gonna stop after one pineapple for now. We'll review it about four times. Good. Good. We're gonna practice it again. Surface, float. A little bit of water over the face. Clear, clear it out if you can. Clear it out if you can. Good. Now stand up. Good. Once you're, uh, once you've learned how to do pineapples, you can stand up if water starts to go over your face. But then after a while, start to try to clear it out while you remain on your back. That's just the next step. You'll, you'll be able to anticipate. It's not like it's gonna do that every time. You keep getting better, you'll start to anticipate the water coming over your face and you'll do something, you'll take some sort of step to prevent that from happening. Good, Spin back, kick, good, and stand up. Good, we're gonna do two more. I love review, review is very helpful for swimmers. If you're out there practicing, don't try and learn something new every single day, do a lot of review. Yeah, used to it. Good, and stand up. Good. So this time with that elbow that you're elbowing the uh, air with and slapping, do it as a freestyle pull. Pull yourself into the turn as if you're using that bot, that arm to help rotate the body onto the side. It'll look like this. Put back on the back? Yeah, the, in order to flip on your back. It'll look more like this too. Pull through in order to rotate.
All right, here we go. And Good, good. Nice. I also like how you pulled with that arm too. I should have definitely mentioned that. I didn't need it, but you did. Okay, if you're out there and you're having a you're, you're having a hard time getting onto your back, try it this way. We're now we're now pulling through our body in order to rotate. And what he just did was even better. He pulled through with one arm, and then once he was near the back, he pulled through with the other arm to finish the turn off to make sure he was stabilized on his back. Use both arms to help rotate you to your back. Be sure to use them one at a time. If you try to pull down with both arms at the same time, you're going to push yourself, you're going to shoot yourself out of the water too high and come back down and sink and pop underwater. So by doing it one arm at a time, you're creating stability and just enough momentum to bring you higher to the surface without causing you to come out too high. Good, chin up, hit the kick, stretch your belly out. And stand up. Good. Finished it. Nice. Did all those without fins. All right, the last review we have now is to roll him back to his belly. And then we'll be caught up with everything we worked on yesterday. And then today we're going to introduce him to some new kicking drills with fins, as well as get him going a little bit faster on the kickboard and on his back with fins, getting, helping him complete full lengths to the pool with a kickboard or on his back with my help for part of it and without my help for a lot of Stretch out, stretch your belly. Good, good. Through. Get it out. Oh, he's gonna keep going. Good, good, good. I'll help you. I'll get you started again. All right, you're going fast enough. You can turn whenever you're ready. Nice, nice. Good job. Good job. I'm also gonna have him. Now remember, you're not wearing fins. That's why it's all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, this got hard again. Why is it hard again? He's not wearing fins. Don't forget that. Don't wear fins. I'm going to have him, though, when you roll back to your belly, I want you to take those two strokes again, and then I'll lift you up. Remember how grammar yesterday, how this taking those extra strokes when you roll back to your belly just to feel stable again? Do that. Take take a stroke or two, and I'll be, you'll feel a lot more stable when you come up. Stretch out, stretch your belly out. Good. Now roll. I got you, I got you. You weren't ready to roll? No worries. Okay, <laughs> restart. Restart. If any of you out there thought that this is fake, if you ever thought that I'd make fake videos, I've gotten that comment once or twice. It's not like a lot of you are claiming I'm now here doing But these are real people in real time. We keep the camera rolling the entire time we're in the water. We're not, we're only turning it off to restart it so the file sizes aren't so large to upload. But we're recording everything we're doing and you just watched him make a mistake. This is a real beginner. Mistakes will happen just like they happen to you. Watch. It's okay. Learn from the mistakes. Okay, so kick a little bit faster on your back, stretch out more faster, get, get to that good back position quicker. It's not all about what we're doing on our belly. Feel mostly about what you're doing on the back. Good. Good. This was way better. Nice. Make that roll. Make that roll. Yeah, and the two strokes. Good job. Good job. And practice that three more times. A little bit of water. See if you can spit it out. Through your nose too. Good. All right. Reach back. Nice. You didn't have space to go too strong. So I was going to pick it up anyway. I was going to grab you and try. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something right here. He's having he has a lot of courage for practicing what we're practicing so close to the deep end. Part of our strategy today is to help him start swimming near deep ends without swimming in deep ends. It's always part of it. Once you start getting near deep ends, you'll feel your heart rate flutter. You're gonna feel the nerves start to go to your to your to your to your throat. You're gonna feel your heartbeat in your throat. That's okay. That's a step towards the deep end. Nobody said you had to swim in the deep end to overcome your fear of the deep end. Yeah, you gotta figure the space out. Mm. 
Do it. Do it. Yes. Yes. Time to roll. Nice. If ever you feel yourself going under like that, roll right away because you might as well not get the water up your nose if you don't have to. That was perfect. All righty. That's it for review. So now we're going to learn something new. All right, so today the next step we're gonna take from the kickboard is I'm gonna have him kicking with fins. I'm gonna be holding on to the kickboard. I'm gonna have him put his face down in the water and blow air out. Not all of his air, just some of it. And when he comes up, he's gonna do the spit. He's gonna breathe in once and then put his head back down, okay? This is so that he gets used to, one, swimming with his arms in front of him at all times because that's where balance comes from later when we learn freestyle. And two, it's going to help him learn how to control his breath while holding on to something tangible that could help him stand up in a moment of panic. This, this next step where you're putting your face down and breathing, coming up and breathing once at a time, the mistake most beginners make is they'll hold their breath too long. What I want you to do is take a breath on a frequent schedule, like every three to four seconds, maybe less. You're just coming up, you're taking your breath, this is key, you're taking your breath before you need it. Keep taking your breath before you need it when you swim, especially on a kickboard. You don't want to go until you're out of breath and then come up and start to like gasp for air. Rather, you want to come up for air before you'll ever need it so you never get to that point. Good. One breath. Stand up. Good. Okay, yep. Nice. Okay, we're gonna practice that four more times, okay? So back, forth, back, forth. <laughs> You're not breathing. You guys, I got one breath. Not the last one, homie. It's good. When I saw the water run down your face and didn't hear it, I got nervous. Awesome! He's getting way better at controlling his breath. He said that he's using the trick about blowing out of his nose so that his mouth remains closed. Just remember that it's not open when you dip it back into the water. It's, 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 you breathe in and close the lips before you go back into the water. There you go! Is that better? Good. Awesome. Much better. Okay, now yesterday I told you guys that I rarely will have you hold the kickboard at the bottom. Today, in this exercise only, it's one of those times. Because at, right now I had him with his face in the water here, but the kickboard was still preventing him from being able to put his face all the way under. His arms are pretty long, so he was able to get most of his head under. But now I'm going to have him stretch his arms, hold the kickboard at the bottom, stretch his arms all the way out, and I'm going to have him get used to putting his face all the way, or his head all the way underwater until he feels it on the back of his head. Once he feels it on the back of his head, then he's going to lift up. So it's almost like he's never going to stop bobbing here. It's going to look like this. Right? There's going to be a lot more water that runs off of his face, but that's because we're challenging how good he is now at getting his breath. He has all the right tools. There might be one or one or two occasions here where it feels like there was too much water running off of his face for him to get a clean breath. You'll probably see him just skip that breath and wait till the next one. Adults do that all the time. It's not necessary, but it's okay. If that's you. If you skip the breath and you just wait till the next one, that's okay. You're preparing, you're anticipating, and I like that. No problem. Nice. Now, you'll notice that he's using this kickboard as leverage when he pulls up, right? He's getting good at this. We're going to keep making him good at it. Tomorrow, you're going to watch us do this drill without the kickboard. I'm going to teach him how to continue to pull up that 
force when he pushes down on the water, it'll lift his body upwards because he's redirecting water downwards and everything has an equal and opposite reaction. If you push downwards with enough force, it'll lift your body up with enough force to get your breath. He just turned himself. You turned yourself. Nice. Yeah, you turned, you went from there and you, I watched you turn yourself with the peak board. That was awesome. If you ever want to turn yourself in the water, no matter what exercise you're doing, whatever's the farthest thing in front of you is what you should use to turn yourself. So since he's holding a kickboard, he's going to turn the nose of the kickboard and that'll turn him. If he wasn't using the kickboard, he'd turn his hands. That would move him. If his hands were behind him and he only had his head in the front, he'd use his head to turn him. Whatever's the farthest thing in front will turn you in the water. Nice, easy, and just like that. See how we're taking baby steps? This is almost the same exercise that we were doing before, but there is a little difference to it. Go slowly and you'll find yourself making more permanent progress. Good, my God. Very nice. I think it's safe to say that he has now figured out how to control his breath in water. Remember that a lot of us think that swimming is a sport of holding your breath when it's not. It's a sport of knowing when and where to take the breath. We all need oxygen to, to survive as humans. We cannot swim until we pass out. It just isn't safe. We need oxygen to keep going faster. So if you know when to take it and where to take it, you're actually going to be a far better swimmer than those who are just trying to hold their breaths and hold their breath and do things. All right, now we've switched up to the upper pool for the new things that we're going to learn today. First thing we're going to start off with is kicking on his back at a faster pace with the fins on. I'm going to get him going the whole way across the pool so he starts to feel what it's like to go 25 meters. This pool in particular is 25 meters. Most of the pools out there are 25 meters. There's some out there that are 25 yards or 50 meters. This one's 25 meters, and he's gonna understand what it feels like to go that long on his back. Now with the sun in his eyes, he's probably gonna keep his eyes closed so he'll feel like he's in complete darkness. Don't do that if you can help it. If you have a pair of mirrored goggles out there, it's oftentimes better to wear a pair of mirrored goggles so the sun doesn't get in your eyes. Because when you close your eyes, it kind of feels a little scarier. And in a straight line, because when you're in, when you're on your back outside, it's very difficult to stay in a straight line because the sky is moving so far away. There's no real vantage point. I always tell my swimmers to look side to side. Now in this pool in particular, there's even less vantage points because we're so high up on on a hill. So we can't we don't have any trees above us that we can use to keep us in a straight line or to warn us when a wall is coming. And if you were to look side to side. He's just gonna see the infinity edges where the water keeps going. So there's not a lot of help for him in this pool. So I'm gonna be guiding him. I won't be holding his head up, but you'll see my hands on his head to guide him, making sure he stays in the straight line and doesn't get injured. Guide. Good. The knees are bending a whole lot. Start to stretch your legs out more and kick from the toe. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was way more effective. Holy smokes. Yep. Now we're moving. Now we're moving. And you're there. That's 25 meters. Feels all right. It's long. It'll make you breathless. But when you can do it while constantly breathing, you'll find yourself feeling like it's shorter than you thought. So for the next few full lengths that I'm forcing him to do, there will be they'll be on the kickboard or they'll be with him breathing on his back the whole time. I'm not going to make him start to do a full length of the pool until I've got him breathing to the side.
going really fast. He's going so fast, even the water's going over his head. You're good. You're golden. Good job. Nicely done. That was awesome. So you just saw him do a full length of the pool on his, all on his own. He's realizing now that when he controls his breath, he can swim just about anywhere. Now, he still has fins on, but I know that he could have done that full length of pool without the fins with just a little more effort. It would have been harder for him, but he could have done it because he's got that much control over his breath. So he is now what I would call more water safe than he was before more water safe so if he were to fall off a boat or anything and he could get to his back i'd be way more confident now if somehow we were done and this was the last lesson now we're not we still got two more after today but that right there watching him move himself on his back for so long controlling the breath and never letting water slosh over his face we're on we're well on our way The next step is with the kickboard. So I'm gonna have him hold it at the top again and just keep his head up again. This should be easy for him. He's gonna feel so good being able to kick across the entire pool. Breathing, not, not, the kickboard's not gonna go too deep under. He's got the fins on now. So everything's gonna come a lot easier to him in this moment. Ready, go. Yeah, keep the head up and breathe. Keep the legs low when you have the kickboard and your head is up. You don't need to break the surface of the water with your feet. It's okay if your fins stay lower because those are very, they're more effective. Go ahead. Floppy ankles, loose floppy feet, stretch your legs out. Take the toes up and down, kick the heels up and down. Very nice. You're almost there. right up on the wall. Nice. In this pool, we kind of have an advantage with the water being the same level as the edge of the pool. And I'm gonna have him start bringing the kickboard into the wall and boosting himself up. And then when I start making him do some of those drills with his arms out in front down there, I'll make him reach for the wall and boost himself up. Kick fast if you feel unbalanced. The faster you kick, the more balance you'll gain. Good. Good. I like how low your shoulders are riding and your mouth is even right there at the surface, but it doesn't seem bothering you. That's a good thing. It's not bothering you. You're also moving at a super steady pace, which means your core is engaged. Smooth. You can even foot cramp. up on the wall. Good. No problem. Nice. Good. As simple as it might seem, finishing on the wall is something that we used to teach adults all the time. Using the wall to stop swimming is actually one of the skills we used to teach adults when I worked with Coach Mike over at Nitro. We would teach adults how to finish on the wall, especially from their back. We would tell them to reach across their body and grab the wall, just like you would do it for releasing yourself out of the pineapple breath. When you're on your belly, you just want to reach up for the walls and press down on the walls to boost yourself up. Still okay to bring your knees into the into your belly, but be careful that you don't slam them into the wall or slam your toes into the wall. Okay, so the next step. We're gonna do the one arm pineapples now. So I'm gonna have him pull with one arm, keep one arm extended out in front, breathe, then bring the other arm down by his side. So I'm gonna have him rolling on one arm. We're gonna treat one arm as if it's the rolling arm now. So he's gonna use one arm to pull down with the other arm, you're gonna stretch it forward, and that'll roll you to your back. You don't need to let that palm flip. Don't keep it down like this. Let that palm flip too. You'll be on your back, and this will create more balance for you. You can kick with one arm behind you, and then bring it down to your side and resume this kick. Okay, so it'll look a lot like this. He'll be on his belly. Then he'll roll to his back with one arm behind him. Keep that arm in the water. Don't let it come out because it'll sink you. Keep that arm underwater and then it'll come down by his side. 
Now that's a that's a long breakdown. Let me show you what it'll look like when he does it at real time speed. Okay, here we go. Good. Good. Yes. Stand up. Good. We'll do that six times. How'd that feel? Good. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Nice. Y'all standing up on your own. That was fantastic. You saw I didn't have to didn't get myself involved at all on that. He did all that by himself. Good. Now bring it down. Pick yourself up into a normal back position and then stand up. Awesome. Gonna have to readjust here. Gonna have to readjust or just stand up. But pay to bail out and reset. Nice. Good. I would say yesterday when I first met him, if that had happened, it would have been a way worse result. You see how I'm recover him recover on his own? He's figuring things out. Okay. Right? That's the advantage of having an instructor with you is they'll know when to step in and when it, it looks like you can figure it out for yourself. It, it might get a little uncomfortable, but right then and there, I know that he could have he could have returned to the service on his own. I could see it. And so I didn't step in to help him because at some point he does have to learn how to do it for himself. I could teach him all day. We could practice it all day until I take my hands off, right? And I don't take my hands off until I know he's ready for it though. So right then and there will be a time where I don't need to step in. He did. He recovered on his own. Good. I just realized why you almost got tripped up again. Here's why. This arm, when you stuck it out, it stayed like this. When you're on your back, it needs to rotate too. That'll make you feel less stuck. There you go. Yep. Here you go. Maybe you can stand up. You're there. Good job. Good job. Nice. All right. So now, let's see. Now he's ready for the side pineapple. Now, I'm going to have him get a couple of strokes going first before we do that. So right here, I'm going to make, I'm going to tell him that he has to do two strokes and then the one arm pineapple. Okay. And after the one arm pineapple, he's going to recover with two more strokes. When he's in the one arm pineapple, at some point, I want him to get down to being able to only need two breaths. The only reason for that is because it makes the drill easy to remember. It's the two, two, two drill. Okay. You take two strokes, two breaths on the one arm pineapple and two more strokes, two strokes, two breaths, two strokes, the two, two, two drill. Good. Now, he was he remembered to do the two strokes at the end, but he also forgot to do the two strokes at the beginning. So on the next few, he's going to add the two strokes at the beginning. If you watch, though, his breaths were perfect. His breaths were solid. On the first and on the last one. So when you came onto your belly, you did this. Right, you left your arms out there temporarily. What I want to see is this. You go right into the pillow. Like that stroke that's coming around your body goes right into the pillow. So first two strokes. Next two strokes. Okay, right before you turn on your back, right before you turn on your back. Stick that arm out there and pause it just for a second. Pause. If you try to swim into the turn, you're gonna feel imbalanced because you're not ready yet. I need this arm to, to pause out here, stabilize into the turn. When he's ready to turn, he's gonna pause and then turn. So it's more like what he was doing earlier, which was just going right into. As opposed to trying to be too smooth with the transition right here, you might feel imbalanced and it might not work stronger kick and a pause right before you roll okay stronger kick and a pause two strokes to start ready go 
can do. Pause it, turn it, breathe it. Good. Now two more strokes. Good. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. 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 My bad. I didn't mean to stop you from touching the wall. That was perfect. Now I was there to help him and remind him and give him the cues, and I'll probably do that a couple more times, but you'll see him start to be able to do this on his own too. Very quickly. This progression of pineapple grills seems to help every single adult go from a non-breather to a breather in four lessons or less. Stretch your belly out, reach you your head back. Good. Okay, now. Oh, nice dismount. Now, so close, so close. You get to your back, but staying too low too long, and you're not able to breathe when your chin right here at the surface. Got it. Head back. Think really, really fast right before you turn on your back. Speed up the kick. Oh. Yep, love it. Restart it. Reset it. I demand it. Push off with one arm pull already going down. Oh. Top like this. Roll your back quick. Okay. Head back. You can roll to, more to your back if you need to. That's okay. Now go ahead and finish. Yep. Good. Good. You got two. You got two more, more success. Now at this point, he might start to think, okay, I'll never get this breathing. It's too hard. Even when I do learn it or do this successfully in front of Johnny, it's never going to be easy for me. Wrong. He's going to keep getting better at it. His brain will keep creating the anticipation or, or the, the thoughts he needs to have in order to anticipate the breath. It does get easier. He's just gonna have to practice this probably 21 times before he even feels confident about it, okay? Nice! See that? All I had to do was hold his hand at one point and he did the rest on his own. We're almost there. I still feel him putting pressure on my hand though when he turns, which means he's gonna be pulling as soon as I let that hand go away. So what I'm about to tell him is he can let go of the one arm pineapple. When you get to your back, it's okay that you pull this arm down sooner now. Because now you're leaving it back there for so long, you're breathing and then slowing down too much. So bring it down for the second or third breath and then finish it off with the third or fourth breath. Okay, so now it's gonna start to look more fluid. Like I said earlier, how it wouldn't look fluid at to start, well now it will, watch this. Pull it down, put your head back, pull it down, pull it down. Nice, now stand up. Good, because I've got behind you. I'm gonna have him pull sooner now, once he gets to his back. He's got the one arm pineapple down, but I want him to pull this arm to keep him up and floating and moving at the surface. I don't want him to ever to start to have to sink his hips or anything like that just to keep his head up. I want the momentum he uses to be able to keep his head up. Can I grab your motor? Head back. That's all right, get the head back sooner. Good. <laughs> Yes, we got another one. On that one, he definitely didn't need me to grab his hand, so I tried to let go as quickly as I can. I think on the next couple, he might be able to do this all on his own without me grabbing his hand. Chin back. Good. Pull it down, chin back, pull it down, chin back. Good. Yes! Yes! Got it! Did it! Now, like Nick Saban says, we don't practice until we get it right. We practice until we can't get it wrong. So, got it now. I want to see him do it again probably four more times without my help before I let him go. So remember, when he's with me, he's going to learn it faster. He's going to pick up on it faster. 
But when he's by himself, he's always going to mem- remember to practice whatever he's doing 21 times. That's the magic number. It's a lot. It sounds like a lot. But once you've done it 21 times, you'll come back and you'll tell me, oh, it wasn't that much. And man, did it work. Good. Chin back. Good. Now you're at the surface. Thank you. Good. Yes. Good. I want to see him do it like that three more times without my help. That looks good. Put your belly out. Nice. I almost ruined it. Sorry. I was telling you to stretch your belly out. Very nice. Wow. Oh, this looks great. That looks great. Get up. Kick. Stretch out. Fast. Good. Blow it out, regroup, get up there, get on the surface, lean back, stretch out, cover. Good. Good. All right, so now we're going to teach them the side pineapple. The side pineapple is a side breath. I just continue to use the word pineapple so that you understand the progression and how all these drills kind of need to go together in order. All right, so the side pineapple, when he rotates onto uh, his back for a breath, before I had him keeping just one arm in front. Now I'm not gonna make him rotate all the way to his back. He's gonna rotate halfway to his back. It might be 45 degree angle this way. It might not be completely on your side. It definitely won't be completely on your back anymore. It's gonna be on this angle. Your head's gonna be backwards a little bit. Breathe right here, kind of on your back, kind of not, and then finish it off. Okay, the transition from back to belly will be even easier than it was before. And I know that was the easiest part of the pineapple as it is, but now it's gonna be even easier. The hard part here will be remembering to kick fast enough to keep your breath clean. If you don't kick fast enough, your mouth's gonna come down here, near the surface of the water, and water might get in and make you feel uncomfortable. All right, so I'll show you how it looks a couple of times here. Show you again. Okay. So one arm will definitely stay up front through the whole breath. You only have time for about two or three breaths. Otherwise, you will feel like you're sinking. But when you're on your side, you come up, you're kicking hard, you're breathing. But if you spend any longer than that, you're going to end up starting to sink. Breathe in, make sure it's all stays clean by kicking fast. Or what I tell some of my swimmers is accelerate through the breath. When you go to your breath, a lot of people stop kicking. I don't know why it's an instinct, but when you go to your breath, you should accelerate the kick to help keep you up and keep the breath clean. Good. Good. To get a clean breath. Okay, a quick one. Good. Good. I was expecting a little bit, I was expecting his arm to drop a little bit more than it did, but he did a great job keeping it out. If anything, Quinn, you can roll more to your back. You were very much on your side. You were on your side as much as like a, an ultra competitive swimmer would. 135 degree angle. You're here, not here. Here. And that means your belly button too, your hips the whole operation, not just your face, the whole operation. It's kind of on your side, but mostly on your back. More on your back. Good. And finish it. I got 
too far behind you again. Nice! Nice! He said he doesn't, he doesn't feel like he has enough time to do lots of breaths. That's why we've been working him down to two breaths or one breath at a time on the kickboard and with some of these drills for this very reason. Because once you start breathing to the side, your body doesn't have a lot of time to get your breath without you sinking. Your body's imbalanced here. You've now put it on its side where it's more hydrodynamic, but it's also heavier. There's less surface area now. So with it on its side, you're going to sink faster. So you only have time for one, maximum two breaths once you start doing the side pineapple or side breathing. Okay? back more tune back more Just stay here there we go good good chin back more good I'm working him hook pretty hard now for a couple hours. I'm going to have him do this probably four more times. Then we're going to call it day number two. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Yeah, nice recovery. Nice recovery. I heard something, but it didn't phase you. All right, we're on to the last time. Yeah. Dang, I'm, I'm really happy. Hey guys, Johnny Rocket here with day number three of our video series with Quinton. Yesterday, we worked on getting him moving a little bit faster on his back, how to take a breath with one arm still extended, and how to keep swimming after the breath. The day before, we were just getting him comfortable with his relationship with the water. We were teaching him how to kick with loose, floppy ankles. We were teaching him how to float on his back and move on his back. And then we even taught him how to rotate from belly to back. Today, we're gonna be working on some hand leap kicking drills. In some of my videos, you've seen me use these drills. They're very beneficial. There's seven of them that make up the hand lead series. You've got head lead kicking, hand lead kicking, hand lead to head lead, hand lead to hand lead, one arm to hand lead, hand lead claw, catch up drill. Today we're gonna to be using head lead, hand lead, and maybe some more depending on how he does on those first two drills. Let's just dive right into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with review today. The first thing we're gonna review are the traveling bobs. We're skipping right past the normal bob, going straight into traveling. And then we're gonna get on the kickboard. After we review that, we'll get him on his back a little bit. And then we're gonna review the couple of pineapples before we put the fins on and start doing those handly kicking drills. Today, he should get a lot more balance in the water, as well as a taller body line. He should also be able to start taking breaths to the side without having to roll over onto his back like we finished yesterday. Go ahead, traveling bobs. Good. Good. All right, and I'm going to take you back on your back. Let's start you off and then let you keep going. Good. Face up. Face up. Face up. There you go. It's a weird position. Yeah, it's a weird position. Hard to stretch your belly out and lift your face up. Good. Small, fast kicks. Good, you're there. Awesome. You can see how he's getting a lot more comfortable on his back. He'll be able to start using things on his back. He'll, he'll, he'll actually start to revert back to his back whenever he gets tired, and that's the goal. We want all of you guys out there to use some back 
kicking in order to recover sooner and keep swimming longer. On your back, you're gonna go as fast as you can. We're going all the way down, okay? Small, fast feet, small, fast feet. Is he running in the water? Yes. Floppy ankles, floppy feet. Boil the surface of the water with your toes. I feel he's heavier. Good, you're halfway, you're past halfway. Stand up. Nice job. Yeah, it's a little different without the fins. It's gonna be harder without the fins, but you remember that I was saying how the way to keep someone from becoming fin dependent, which hardly ever happens anyway, but in order to prevent it at all costs, every time you're doing a review, review it without the fins first, then review it with the fins. And the reason I like reviewing it without the fins first is because you still have a lot of energy and stamina. You're fresh. You're going to be a little bit faster, a little bit crisper. And then once you're fatigued and you're like, man, that's so much harder without fins. Go ahead, put the fins back on. And then you'll see yourself do that drill even better than you did the day before after having tried it without fins. <laughs> wow. And you're too good. This one's already way better. It be lighter too. Breathe with your mouth, spit the water away if you have to. Stay comfortable. The hard exercise. The more you can relax yourself, the better. It's gonna be hard regardless. You're doing good. I like the steady deep breath I hear. It sounds like you're exercising, it's much better. On day one, his breath didn't sound like this. It was more like holding it mm. and then letting it out and gasping for it. You know how to get on the, kick, the kickboard on the wall. Do it, there you go. So this right here is also gonna show him, even though it's just review, it's also gonna show him just how, how easy it, things can be with fins. He'll gain a healthy perspective of how much harder he has to work when it's time to try something without fins versus when it's time, time to do something with fins. Before, he was probably trying his 100% all the time. Now that he's giving this 110% on the kickboard, he'll, he might be able to back off his 100% on the fins. So you might be able to go at 80, 90% effort on the fins now, and you'll see how he'll develop two different efforts now, an easy effort versus a hard effort. It's very important to have both in swimming. In fact, I say that the more gears you have, like on a bicycle, the better swimmer you are. If you have only three speeds, you're an average swimmer. But if you have six speeds, you're a better swimmer. Okay, now he's ready to start doing the pineapples again. We're gonna review the pineapples. I'm gonna have him finish on his back kick a little bit and stand up on his own. Then we're gonna have him do it from his belly to his back and back to his belly. Then we're gonna do a couple where he takes two strokes, rolls to his back, two breaths, and he's gonna take two breaths here and then he's gonna close it off and take two more strokes. And stand up. Important that you redevelop your relationship with the water if you're learning how to swim out there on your own. You need to understand how water floats you. It doesn't pull you down. On day one, I watched him try to do these pineapples from like a complete standstill. 
and he was getting water all over his face. That time, he pushed right off the wall and went into the pineapple because he's starting to understand that momentum helps you turn your body in the water. And on day one, he hadn't figured that out. Now it's almost instinctual. That's why I tell people, first thing you do when you're learning how to swim is pull your feet off the bottom and float. Let, the, let, the, let your body just linger in the water. You won't go under. You're just temporarily letting your feet bounce off the bottom of the pool and you'll start to understand how water is like space. You're floating. Now we're getting up, swing back. Good. Hold up, stand up. Okay, the second pineapple we're going to review now. Two strokes, pineapple all the way to your back, and then two more strokes. Chin up, chin up. Good, good. Wow, very good. Now roll back. Good, good. Man, without fins, I anticipated that to be a lot messier. Good job, good job. Not saying that it was easy for him, I just anticipated it being messier. It was hard for him, but he was able to keep his focus on what step to do next. Doesn't mean it wasn't hard, I just expected it to be messier. I expected him to not have that anticipation instinct yet. That was awesome. Let's watch it again. Good. Bring the knees in, bring the knees in. Oh, right. I forgot you weren't standing up. I'm so sorry. I, forgot. I was teaching, I was telling you to stand up and you were rolling back. That was awesome. He didn't even listen to his teacher. It was beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes even the teacher makes mistakes and accidentally forgets what step they're on. That was awesome. He kept his focus, even when I was telling him to do something else. Spit it out, blow it out. It's not the end of the world. Whoa, and he stand up, stood up on his own too. He's even got that down. My guess is actually he finds it easier to stand up without fins. It is easier to stand up without fins. If you are out there and you're like, man, the fins keep tripping me up. You're gonna need to bring your knees in even higher to your chest before you slam them on the ground so the blade of the fin misses the bottom of the pool before putting your feet on the ground. Okay, it's very important. Standing up in fins isn't easy. All right, the next step is the 45 degree pineapple. I'm going to be pulling on his arm a little bit here and probably pricing my hand under his head because he's not wearing fins on this one today. Okay, so this one, he's going to need a little bit more momentum from me, a little bit more help before he can be uh, do it on his own without fins. That will probably be tomorrow, though. You'll probably see that as early as tomorrow. It's going to be two strokes, 135 degree rotation, two strokes. Watch me. that chin back. Keep this arm out. Good. Okay, whenever you're ready. Nice, stand up, good. Awesome. <clears throat> now I wasn't there to remind him to bring his arm, keep his arm out, but we brought it back and then he actually had a nice little body line there going for a second. Ooh. Good, good, almost had the stand up. He pulled one arm down to take another pull and that's the arm he normally uses to stand himself up. So he just got a little confused in his own head when he pulled that arm down. He was just, un he was surprised that there wasn't any stability. He'll get on this one, watch this one. Good, good. He even got his arm back out in front on his own there that time. Nice, once you get to your back, right there. Keep that chin back. Back, good. Keep it back, good. I keep pulling on your arm thinking I'm gonna pull you and then you start it. Sorry, I'm not trying to stop. Oh, no. That looks good. Nice, he did all that one on his own. It looks looking good. Today we're gonna to try and put some longer blade fins on Quentin. The short blade fins are very beneficial for a lot of exercises and the long blade fins are just like extra large training wheels. So we're gonna try some long blade fins today and then 
he should be able to do some of the drills a little bit easier, but it might take him some time getting used to them. All right, so we're going to start him off getting used to these fins by putting him on the kickboard. I'm going to have him kick down and back with these longer blade fins so he can get used to them, and then we'll resume that last pineapple drill we just did and go right into the head lead and hand lead kicking. Here we go. <laughs> Look at the smile on his face. He's like, I love this part. The fins. This part's awesome. What do you think of them? Okay. Breathe a lot. Don't let water get in your mouth or your nose. Just stay calm and breathe. Should be an enjoyable experience. After a while. Might not be enjoyable at first. So these technically aren't even long blade fins. Long blade fins are what scuba divers wear and they're really long and plastic, so they're actually even more effective. But they're not helpful in a swimming pool. They're actually kind of counterproductive. You'll kick too big and you'll kick too slow. So what he had before, what we would call training fins. Training fins are for athletes who are too, maybe too fast for these, what we call floating fins. Floating fins have a slightly longer blade than training fins. And then of course you got long blade fins, which are scuba. These, uh, these floating fins, these I find are perfect for beginners of all ages and kids until about age 14, 15 for, for um, any type of practice training. Once they get to that older age, I usually have them have both sets of fins a pair of floating fins and a pair of training fins. All right, so now we're gonna resume the one-arm pineapple where he only goes about 135 degrees onto his back. So slightly on his side, slightly on his back. Good, chin back a little bit, chin back. All right. More strokes. Wow, that was incredible. So he got that pretty easily on his own. So now today he's definitely ready for these head lead and hand lead kicking drills. He's gonna like these a lot. Head lead kicking, your arms are by your side and directing your head out in front. Head to lead the way the entire time. This drill is really good for a swimmer's head position in the water to correct it. Sometimes head positions are too high. Rarely are they too low but most of the time are they too much side to side if they're serpentining down the lane. You want to keep that head nice and still. You want to keep your chin slightly tucked so it feels like the back of your neck is nice and smooth. You don't want any wrinkles in the back of your neck. You want it to feel nice and smooth. So stretch your spine out. You want to feel as if there's a, a, a baseball cap on the crown of your head that you're pushing that little bead on the cap to the other wall. At the same time though, you're pulling your hips and your legs and your feet backwards and in the opposite direction. So you wanna feel like you're pulling your body in two different directions as you do this drill. Watch me. Okay, keep watching. And this time as I do it back, Quinton's gonna be able to see the demonstration as well. Okay. I feel almost like I'm trying to charge forward with my head at an incredibly slow pace because I'm in water. I got you, I got you. You were like, how do I roll to my back? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to use your arms to roll to your back, use your shoulder. Yeah, give it a little shoulder twitch and kick yourself, use your legs too to turn, right? So you're trying to use your upper body while your legs stay down. You gotta turn the legs too by kicking sideways and doing those scissors that I was talking about. Not so bad, spit it all out, get it all out. Okay, now try to roll back and then I'll pick you up. Yeah, not so bad. The roll back was way easier. Way easier. <laughs> way easier. Yeah. For those of you out there who might have a hard time rolling onto your back, you just saw that that is the harder part. Rolling back to your belly is easier. If you remember yesterday in the video, I told you that when you roll back to your belly, it's easier to 
in the pineapple drills because you're using your arm, right? Well, even on, on these Hanley kicking drills, if you don't have an arm to roll you back to your belly, it's still possible, but you're gonna have to start to use your hips and your kick to help turn you. Use your feet to turn you by putting different direction on the water by putting different pressure in a different place on the water to change your direction. Good, kick yourself up. Good. It's fast. Nice! He owes a better roll to his belly and to his back. On his back, I'm gonna have him wait until he rises up a little bit higher to the surface again. Because right now, when you try to turn too deep in the water, it's, it's part of what's keeping your head under. Because then you, I said chin back, and you did. You pushed your chin back, but that just made it deeper in the water, right? Pick the head up, and then with Woo! Yeah, baby! Good job! He got all the way onto his back on his own that time. I saw him pick his head up before rolling, and then when he rolled, all he had to do was let his legs sink a little bit and kick fast, and that kept his head up. Good. Good. That was awesome. So that time you even got to see him recover on his own. He rolled to his back, got water over his face, and he figured out how to get up higher and recover and blow it all out. This is the part of training that some of you might not enjoy because you're gonna get water in your nose, on your mouth, in your mouth, and it's gonna be rough. But if you do it 21 times, that magic number 21, if you do it 21 times, you won't be getting water in your nose or your mouth anymore. Then today, I'm probably gonna do this about eight times because he's already getting it on, on try number three. And then I want him to move on to the hand knee kicking, which is a better drill anyway for what we're trying to accomplish here. This head lead kicking drill, the reason I'm making him do it is because I need him to start to be able to rotate his body without his arms. It's going to help him a lot once we add in the arms. He won't have to rely so much on the arms. He'll be a more well-rounded, complete swimmer. Recover, recover. Good recovery. Good recovery. You're okay. Good job. Let me give you one more piece of advice here, all right? Right before you wanna initiate the rotation, kick faster. Lift your head up, kick faster, then rotate. You're gonna find that at a higher speed, you'll rotate at a quicker, tighter velocity. Yeah! Didn't work for you on your belly, but it worked for you on your back. One of the reasons that he needs to kick more is because I'm having him lift his head slightly before he rolls to his back. Normally, if you're a competitive swimmer out there, I wouldn't tell you to do that. I don't want you lifting your head position like that. But for someone who's learning how to get their own breath, and he's someone who might be accidentally keeping his or forcing his head down and unsure how to do it, I'm okay with him lifting his head before he turns and then rotating his back. But now I'm telling him that he has to kick faster if he's gonna do that. He has to kick a lot faster because when your head lifts, your hips drop, and now you're causing a lot more resistance. You're swimming uphill. So you need to kick faster just to maintain this body position, which for him right now is slightly better. Okay, it's keeping his head up. He's able to breathe. It's slightly better. Eventually, he'll get so much better at anticipating rolls, anticipating breaths, water, that he won't have to lift up anymore. But that could be a year away from now. Okay, so it's okay to, to make some minor adjustments that would be counter to what other coaches might teach you. All right, if some other coaches are out there saying that one size fits all, that means they're just regurgitating whatever they were taught as a kid because they can't fathom the idea of maybe they didn't have the best coach in the world or maybe the sport has progressed and there are new techniques or there are exceptions that we've noticed are okay. It's a necessary trade-off. It's like trading a slightly worse body position for success in the breath. And that's what we're after. Sweet. <clears throat> Good. The last, the last step and tip that you can work on or that he's gonna work on to make his head lead kicking better before we move on is to try and make the turn faster. Don't turn slowly and try to keep yourself up.
try to make it almost as if you're rotating your body ahead of your head and then you're just going to whip the head around and it's going to match with your body. Wow! Yes! Yeah! Did you see what a difference that made? Oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. You snapped your body around way quicker and your face never dipped underwater. Not even once. That was excellent. I'm gonna have him do that one more time. Nice. You rotated back there, you went deep. Water floats us, it does not pull us down. Water picks you back up. One of the one of my favorite demonstrations to do, and I'll do it with Quentin so he can push me down because other people have seen it. I'll become a beach ball and I'll have air in my lungs. He's gonna push me down. I'm just gonna bounce right back up to the surface and then he's gonna push me down again. I'm gonna float right back up. Okay, you're gonna push me down twice. So you can see water floats us. If you've got air in your lungs, those are like air balloons inside your chest and oxygen bubbles always float back up to the surface. They can't, they don't sink. So when there's oxygen inside your body, it's gonna be pulled up. You're pulling, your, when there's air in your lungs, you're being pulled up to the surface. Without air in your lungs, you'll sink. Watch this. Get it up, get it up. <laughs> nice. You look like you're getting comfortable putting on your back and clearing it out too. It's not causing as much panic. The more he does it, the more he realizes it's not the end of the world. Plus the more he does it, the less it happens. And when it does happen, there's less water getting in because it just keeps trying and keeps getting better and keeps practicing what I'm telling him, especially regarding the head position and the breath. All right, so now we're doing hand lead kicking. Hand lead kicking is the second drill in the hand lead series. And this one is probably the most common one used. This drill puts a swimmer more on their side than their belly. So it makes it a little bit harder to balance. Recommend using fins for the first time you try this. And you're gonna be kicking with your face in the water. You want to stay in the tallest body line you possibly can by stretching your fingertips forward and stretching the other fingertips back, stretching your hips and your feet back, stretching your hip, your head forward. So again, you're pulling your body in opposite directions to lengthen out your spine. For those of you who didn't know, you can swim about two inches taller than you can walk on land. When I swim regularly for exercise, I have my friends and family asking me if I've grown recently because I'm a lot taller when I'm a swimmer. And so when you swim in the water, stretch your spine in opposite directions to give yourself a taller body line. It'll also engage your core. The more you're stretched in opposite directions, the more engaged your core will be because your body feels like it's being pulled off balance and your core is what you use to stay in balance. So for this drill, you're gonna take a breath about every two or three seconds on a regular interval. Don't hold your breath until you need one Take it before you need it. Take your breath before you need one, like this. Okay? Now, for him, I'm actually gonna start him out with his face already breathing. So he's gonna start off like this. And we're gonna let him kick all the way down, getting his head in a nice comfortable position in this breathing hand lead kicking technique. Once he gets comfortable in this position after probably two to four lengths, then I'm gonna start having him dip his face in the water and come right back out and come right back out. After that, I'll have him start leaving his face in the water and turning it for the breath, okay? So it's almost like a progression. We're gonna start with him just breathing the whole time, getting comfortable in the body position, and then we'll work him back into the practicing this drill with his face in the water and only turning it for a breath. Now, lay your ear down on your shoulder. There you go. You don't need your forehead out to breathe while you're going so fast. Get up, get up. Get up. Keep up, okay. 
Wow, it's like we're both doing handling tree control and holding her. I'm gonna make my swimmer do this. Is a cool idea. Lay that head down more in the water. No, no, keep your face breathing. Just lay the top of your head down more. There you go. Doing good, and we're almost there. I'm gonna put your hand on the wall. You can stand up. Nice, good. On the way back, we're gonna be using the arm he doesn't normally use to breed. We're gonna see how this goes. Good, think about pulling the hand up. Pulling the hand up. Yeah, there you go. Wow, he's all on his own. Wow, he's all on his own, folks. This looks incredible. We're doing it together. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone pick that up that fast. It's good, sorry, I kicked you. He only stopped early because I got too close to him and he kicked me and it threw him off a little bit. <laughs> I did not anticipate that being that good, especially with his off arm. I think it's time to see if whether or not he should be using that arm to breathe. <laughs> to help you with your head position a little bit. I want to turn to be more in line with your spine. Yeah, almost like to your shoulder. Good, pull this arm up. There you go. Yep, good, lay this top of your head down more. Good. Getting used. You're getting used to that sink. You do sink at first. You always will. I almost told you at the other end that I was really impressed how you got prepared for the sink before you were able to rise back up to the surface. And then on this side, I was going to tell you prepare for that sink again. But I thought you would. Okay. The less this head, can, or the more this head can relax, the better this drill will feel. Yeah. It's okay for it to lay in the water a little bit. Good job. Keep stretching those fingertips forward. You're doing good. You're almost there. It's about two yards away. Good. You got a leg cramp? Oh, you're just tired. <laughs> just tired. This drill is hard, it's not easy, it's gonna wear you out. Take long breaks between 25s because I want you to feel fresh each time you push off the wall. If you push off the wall and you're feeling that burn still from the last lap, you might give up in the middle or you might have a panic moment. It's okay to be fresh for all these drills, especially the harder ones. Bigger kicks with your legs, bigger kicks. It'll help me, it'll make you feel easier. Yeah, more volume. You're five yards away from the wall, you're still fine. You can even look at it if you need to. Yeah, now you're starting to be aware of where you are in the water. Now you're starting to create your own awareness in the water. You're not just out here drilling into oblivion. You're in a pool and you're looking around and you're going, okay, I can adjust where I swim. I can go side to side. I could see how far I have left to go. I could see how far I've come from. When you're training on your own, one of the best ways to know when it's time to go again for another length or another attempt is called a heart rate interval. I call it a heart rate interval because what I want you to start doing is listening to your heart rate internally. So like with your body, you can feel the thumb, especially when you're working hard, you can feel it even in your fingertips. Once you feel like you're caught your breath and you can breathe comfortably and it doesn't feel like your heart rate is in your neck anymore, it's back in your chest, then it's time to go. I call it a heart rate interval. It's basically waiting until your heart rate has settled so you're calm again. If you're training for triathlons or the Olympics, obviously you're gonna have to do shorter breaks because you want that interval to be kind of tight. But when you're learning things, you need to start off fresh and calm each time. So I call them heart rate intervals because I want people to start listening to their heart rates and paying attention to their body and using that as their cue on when to go again. Because we're all at different stages in our, in our lives, in our swimming career, in our body types. So, so I've been overweight at times. 
I needed more rest. So that's another reason the heart rate interval helps with individual people practicing on their own, with individuals practicing by themselves. If you pay attention to your heart rate rather than a clock, you'll find the experience a little more enjoyable. Oh, we took on some water to see how he responds. Yeah, he spit it out. Good. I heard it. You did good. Pull him a little bit more towards the middle just so he doesn't hit, hit the back wall. He's doing good. Lay down more. Bring the hips up more if you can. Yeah. There we go. Ah, ah, you lost that. It's okay. Keep the arm underwater. I like how much you're stretching it forward. That's better than most. But keep it underwater. When it comes up, it sinks you. Yeah, there you go. All right, so now we're going to go down to that deep end. We're going to go into those other drills probably, to, uh, the like dip in the face, probably after that if he's feeling fresh enough. But right now, he just did those kicks so smoothly that... I have no doubt he's able to do them with his face in the water, but it's a very hard workout, so I need to give him a little bit of a break. We're gonna go down to the lower pool again, and I'm gonna take him through the deep end for the first time. It's gonna be on his back, and we're gonna take the fins down with us so he has that confidence, but he's gonna go into the deep end with me for the first time. Now, when it comes to deep water, there are a few things I like to start with. For one, it's the same as the shallow water. Water is water wherever it is. The only thing that's changed is the bottom of the pool. The bottom of the pool is farther away. It doesn't change the water. If the water's still the same, it'll still float you if you got air in your lungs. If you don't got air in your lungs, it'll sink you. The best thing you can do when first going into deep water is be on your back. Because when you look down at the water, it scares you. When you look down at the bottom of the pool, it scares you how big it is. And you immediately imagine yourself down on the bottom there, drowning without anybody coming to help you. And that's a scary place, that's a scary thought to have. So instead, I like, I recommend you go in on your back with someone who can swim very well. And you have fins. If you don't have fins, it's okay. Grab a kickboard and hug the kickboard. That'll also give you a little bit of security, a little bit of confidence. If you don't have that either, spread out like you're creating the most surface area you possibly can and breathe. Best thing I, you can do in the deep water is breathe. It calms your heart rate down. In fact, blow out more than you breathe in. If you ever want to raise your heart rate for any reason, breathe in more than you breathe out. But if you want to lower your heart rate for whatever reason, breathe out longer than you breathe in. Your heart rate slows down. It's how alligators slow their heart rates down to like one beat a minute. You gotta breathe out longer than you breathe in and you've gotta take clean, deep, cleansing breaths. Because what's happening, your heart rate's fluttering, which means your brain is starting to release those chemicals that have to do with adrenaline and panic. And you don't want that. You want your body to feel like it's at rest. You wanna treat the water as if it's a big old water bed and you're just laying in bed. Okay, here we go. Good. Remember what I said about the breathing? Keep the heart rate low. Okay, we're in it. Turn you around. Go back. You're light as a feather. stand up all right the next step is I'm gonna have him do it again with me and he's gonna start looking around he's gonna start looking around not underwater yet but he's gonna start looking around just so he can understand that he doesn't have to remain completely frozen he is in control when I was holding his head up he was light as a feather I could have let him go but as a good teacher I won't until I've told him that that's what's coming next okay don't trick your swimmers into doing things you're gonna lose their trust really fast good yeah oh next I was gonna say start looking around Diving board. Diving board. Slide. Good. Keep yourself back. And there, stand up. When you're on your back, all of a sudden it's going to start to feel like deep water isn't a problem. And that's what I'm doing. I'm changing the relationship that you have with deep water. When you're on your back and your lungs are filled with air and you're able to kick, 
You're not going under. You won't. You just won't. And even if you did, you have fins on, you can keep yourself back up to the surf. But what, what's happening is he's now going into the deep water going, I feel the exact same I did in the shallow water. In fact, I can't even tell when we've left the shallow and gone into the deep. That's good. That's what we want. One more time. All right, I'm gonna have you kick yourself back to the shallow. Here we go. And stand up. No problem for you. All right, the next step is to grab his kickboard and we're gonna have him now with this face up in the deep end, okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Breathe through your mouth, Keep deep. The heart rate low so you don't get any adrenaline or panic. Arm stretched, arm stretched, good. Now, dismount on the kickboard right here, touch the wall, or like, yeah, grab the wall if you want, and then bring the knees towards the wall. The arm stretched, good. Deep water's the same, same water. We never try to touch the bottom of the pool when we swim in shallow water. We're not going to do it in deep water. Nice! Yep, you got it. Looking swimmer. Arms stretched. Good. Breathe deep. Yeah! Now, grab the wall. Bring the knees to... Oh, you're fine. Good. Yeah. Stop. Hey everyone, Johnny Rocket here with the last day of this video series. We're on day number four. Over the first three days, we got Quinta redeveloping his relationship with the water, learning how water is a lot like space. It floats you as long as you keep air in your lungs. We also taught him how to kick with looser, floppier ankles, as well as how to roll onto his back to get a breath. On day two, we taught him how to roll from his back back to his belly and add a couple of strokes while he swims. We taught him how to breathe to the side a little bit easier, as well as how to get his breath down to one inhale at a time. We also got a movement on his back more on day two, a little bit faster. That way he could do full lengths of the pool nice and easy on his own. Yesterday we got into the hand lead drills by doing head lead kicking and hand lead kicking. That was giving him more balance and body line in the water. Today we're gonna to be working on the keel freestyle, helping him breathe every two strokes, staying on his belly. Let's dive right into it. All right, as always, we're gonna start with review. Right now, I've got him practicing his traveling bobs. The next thing we're gonna do is get on his back and kick him all the way down and back again. After that, we'll review a kickboard all the way down and all the way back, as well as one arm pineapples. After that, we'll review the headley kicking and the handley kicking briefly, and then we're gonna put the fins on and get back to work. Here we go. Yeah, you really need your legs on your back as much as you think you do. Nice. A lot of adults will forget to breathe in, the, in this exercise. You'll notice Quentin's doing a good job of controlling his breath. Focusing on it being consistent. When you can keep your heart rate low as you learn new things, you'll find yourself learning them way faster. Whenever that panic sets in, that things don't seem to go well, right? What's causing the panic? Oftentimes, it's the thought or the feeling of drowning, which goes back to not being able to breathe. So when you focus on your breath, or well, control your breath as you swim, You'll have less and less of those moments of panic. 
you're there, but try rolling over like you did yesterday. Rolling over, grabbing the wall, standing up on your belly. Good job. Nice. Now we're gonna review the kickboard. Now I'm only gonna make him review this once, so we'll leave the kickboard at the other end. And on the way back, we're gonna do some head lead kicking. Head lead kicking. Feet splashing the best you can. Touch to the left foot, so long as it comes up and slaps the water, good enough. So we're gonna leave the kick port here so that I can get him doing head lead kicking back, rotating onto his back to get a breath today instead of on his belly. Yesterday we were doing this and I told him to start twisting his hips more before he turned his head. So we're gonna review that today, but without the fins. Good, Pin up. And we're gonna stay on your back for a while. You're gonna stay on your lap back for a while because you don't have fins, so you're gonna have to spend more time on your back than you do your belly. You can roll back now whenever you want. Sounds like your breath is calmed down a little bit. Good. All right, so we got back to your belly, and once you're on your belly, it's hard to get another rotation back to your back. If you need to pull your arms out in front of you, and do like a big old breaststroke pull to get the momentum going, that's okay. Try it, it'll help you get the momentum going a little bit more. Remember, he's trying this today without fins. You wore fins yesterday, so getting back to his back was a lot easier than it is today. Good! I did, my hands are here, but I didn't help him do that roll. That was on him. Okay, sounds like you're about ready. Good. Okay, stand up, good. And you're there, let's we'll just stop it there, nice. All right, the last thing we're gonna review before putting the fins on today is the hand lead kicking. So we're gonna do the hand lead kicking only to the hot tub and back. That way it's a full length of the pool. We're gonna just do it to the hot tub and back one arm and then the other arm. Whenever you're practicing the hand lead kicking drill, don't forget to alternate arms. Sometimes I'll watch even adults do one arm for 425s and then they're like, oh no, I forgot to use my other arm completely. Oftentimes you're gonna use the arm to the side that you like to breathe. Don't forget to use the other arm too, just to get yourself feeling like what it's like to be on the other side of your body and breathing to that side, just in case. Just in case you're in an ocean, the waves are coming at you like this, normally breathe to that side, but now you probably shouldn't because the wave might hit you. You might want to try breathing to the other side. Tilt the back of the head down, tilt the top of your head down so your chin pops out. When you lift the top of your head up, your chin falls near the surface, you might choke on water. Lift the top of your head down towards your hand that's outstretched so your chin pops out with plenty of space to breathe. I can talk as I breathe on my side. Good, yep, you're fine. Breathe, breathe, take a few breaths here. Yep, clear everything out. You don't need the top of your head, you just need the bottom of your head. The chin. Good, yeah, that's much better. Good, good. There you go. Lay the head down. Yeah, hands up, head down. There you go. Now finish it off with two more strokes. Oh, he's going the whole way. We're going the whole way. We're going the whole way. Do it. Lay the head back. Lay the head back. Good. Breathe in until you're up here. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> On these next two strokes, you'll be there. Reach for the wall. 
<laughs> yeah! Full length of the pool right there. Dude, what? <laughs> nice job. I am so proud of you, buddy. <laughs> that was incredible. We are still in the review stages of today's day and he just did a whole length of the pool by himself. That was awesome. That was awesome. This might be his best drill. This might be the drill he takes with him and does the most when he's at home. Back. Good. Lay this head back. Hold the arm up, head down. There you go. Much lighter. Good job. <laughs> okay. Well, if it's from the lack of practicing it to that side, I was wrong. Might be the lack of practicing to that side, but I was wrong. Your left side is better. Your right side breathing is better. Yeah, the left side. So you'll notice a couple of times there, he switched from breathing every two strokes to breathing every four. And that's why a lot of you adults ask me, why, why two? You know, you're thinking three or four is easier. It's harder on the breath, but it might be easier for you to coordinate the breath. Because sometimes you need a little extra time to keep moving and to think about when that breath is coming because you're not so comfortable just sticking that arm out there and trying to balance into a new breath. You're, you want more momentum and you're trying to get yourself higher in the water before you take that breath. That's the only re other reason I would be okay with breathing fours and like sprinting workouts and things like that. But by breathing fours, you might be creating more time between breaths to think about the execution of the breath. That's okay too. You don't have to breathe twos just because that's the way I'm coaching it. I coach twos a lot because I want my swimmers constantly breathing, never struggling for air. But if you need to prepare for the breath, take three or four strokes between breaths. That drill was a breakthrough moment for Quinton. We're gonna do it two more times just to help him ride the train of this success. Then we're gonna get into the keel as well as the okay drill and the pistol drill today to help give him a feel of the water. Whenever you do those drills, you'll feel like the water is now so grabbable so tangible you can hold it and pull it wherever you want it'll make it feel like you have mittens on your hands after that we're going to put the paddles on his hands so he really feels the benefits of his pull watch this lay the head back there you go that's <laughs> rising lay the head down Lay this head down for the chin to come out. Lay the head down for the chin to come out. Lay the head down. Two more strokes in you there. Nice. The more tired you get while you practice, the more the wrong instincts will kick in. In water, unfortunately, all the wrong instincts kick in if you don't know how to swim. Once you've been taught how to swim, you start to gather more proper instincts. It's not that you're forever doomed in the water with your instincts. But at the beginning, when you're learning how to swim, one of the instincts that's hard to overcome is the lifting of the head. When you when you are in water, you want or you think you want to lift your head higher to be able to get a breath. But that's going to cause troubles for you because you're putting your chin so close to the water and your mouth's on your chin. It's not on your forehead. So the forehead doesn't need to come up this high. The chin does. How do we do that? Tip the head upside down. And you gotta lean your head more into the water to get your chin out for a cleaner breath. It's a little disorienting. You're gonna feel a little awkward, a little imbalanced, a little tippy. But keep doing it or do a full 25 with it like that and you'll be used to it soon enough. It won't take very long if you do this drill 21 times or if you just kick with your head down on that shoulder, you'll get used to it way faster and you'll be able to do this drill and then go into regular freestyle swimming Breathing very smooth. There we go. Wow. There we go. Very nice. Good. Tilt back. Relax. Tilt back. Bring the arm up. Meet the arm and the head in the same place. Yeah, the arm comes up, the head goes down. Yeah. 
Get the rest of the way in. Get the rest of the way in. Let's get the rest of the way in. Okay. I like the deal because it helps a swimmer develop a smoother relationship with their stroke. It won't necessarily make swimming easier. In fact, for some of you who are already good swimmers, it'll make swimming harder. For others who maybe are still beginners, it might make this stroke easier, it might not. But the reason I like it is because it's developing the right relationship with your technique. It helps develop the right feeling that you should have when you swim, which is more of like an ice skating or rollerblading feeling. When one arm is pulling backwards, the other arm should be shooting forwards, creating balance. What happens most of the time though is too many swimmers will pull one arm down and then the other arm hasn't even placed out in front in the water. So at some point they've got one arm in the air weighing them down, the other arm already back here pulling their body in a different direction. So you can imagine that just makes them feel really off balance and sloppy and chaotic. What you want though is to like an ice skater, how they'll take one blade of their, their skates and they'll turn it sideways and push the front foot forward. And then they switch this front foot forward, then turns to the side as the other foot comes forward and shoots forward. So they're constantly pushing off the back leg, gliding on the front leg. Same with swimming. You're gonna be pulling the water back as you glide forward on that front arm. And then they're gonna switch. You're gonna pull one arm back as the other arm glides but you kind of have to wait until this arm tags up, just like an ice skater. And if you think about it, it all makes sense because not only is it just physics, but we're all dealing with water here, ice or liquid. When, you were, when you're in water, it's a pull and glide type of technique. Or when you're skating on water, it's a pull and glide technique. It's a push and glide technique. So with the keel, you're gonna hold it with one hand between your thumb and your pointer finger, and you're gonna push the keel out front. Now many of you don't have a keel. This is a rare device. Many people who have been swimming their whole lives tell me that they've never seen anything like this. And when I first saw it, about three years ago, a little over three years ago, I had never seen one before either. So I'm pretty sure it's a new device, but it's excellent. If you have anything like it, or if you don't have a keel and you don't have any other substitution, then you can just do what I call catch-up freestyle or superhero freestyle. Catch-up freestyle is where your hands touch one another thumbs brushing by one another. That's ketchup. Hands must catch up to one another and touch each other. It's not like ketchup and mustard. It's one hand catching up to the other. Or superhero freestyle, which is arms just will come side by side. Now, superhero freestyle, a lot of people get stuck then going back into their old freestyle. If you're gonna do superhero freestyle, you need to be very intentional about putting both arms out in front before taking the next pull, right? With catch-up freestyle, it limits you. You won't be able to take that next pull until you feel the contact with your hands out front. So at the early stages, I like keel, then catch-up freestyle, then superhero freestyle. If you don't have a keel, then just do catch-up freestyle, then superhero freestyle. If you have anything like a kickboard that could substitute for a keel, something that you can hold on to, kickboard freestyle is excellent too. You'll grab the board with one hand, pull with the other hand. Now with the hand that holds the board, don't let that hand bend while the other arm's pulling back. Keep that arm fully extended out front, pushing the kickboard farther in front of you as you pull. The black stripe on top of this keel is my indication with my swimmers that they're smooth. If it's wiggly, they're not smooth. It's chaotic, it's all over the place. They're not very smooth yet. They're relying too much on their arms and their head and their upper body. They start relying more on their legs and their core and their lower body. If the stripe stays smooth, it doesn't move very much, except for maybe when the hands switch, well then I know that you are a very well balanced swimmer. You're using your legs to dry the stroke, and you're pulling and pushing like an ice skater. Breathe, breathe, breathe. One hand down, head down. Go. It's different. <laughs> it's different. It's definitely a different feeling with the keel. Yeah. If you have the faster kick, if you got the fins on, it'll be an easier experience. I'm gonna tell him right now that when he breathes, he needs to accelerate through the breath with his kick. Yes! Nice job. Nice job. You got that one breath all on your own. Well done. How do you like it? I mean, I know you love it, but... <laughs>
Um, what I can see though is what I can tell already is that when we put this up, his freestyle is gonna be that much better. I can already tell because this is causing him a little bit of, of, of chaos. Norm, uh, right before this, when we were swimming those lengths all the way down and back, that aha moment we had, he was not using the keel, and I wasn't prepared for him to do that well yet. Normally, I think that the keel would be helpful for him, but he kind of took a huge leap forward today with those lengths back and forth earlier. So now the keel might feel a little chaotic to him because he, he, he had a light bulb moment where things clicked, and now it's like this thing holding him back. But I'm gonna keep making him use it. In fact, I want him to be able to try to go farther than the hot tub on these next two lengths. Because when we put it down, he's gonna feel so free. He's gonna feel like he is the king of his own stroke. Breathe, 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 breathe! It's been a long time breathing, he didn't breathe. Oh. Yeah, nice. Breathe again. Good job. Good job. Good job. The anticipation of what comes next. He's getting better at anticipating what comes next. Yeah! Let's go! That was incredible. He's getting so much better at being able to anticipate what the next step is. You'll see that as he's taking his breath, he's already thinking about the next stroke. And then while he's taking that stroke, he's already thinking about the next breath. He's anticipating what comes next. And that's what's leading to this success of him being able to do it on his own, is him thinking about the next step. Taking less breath between. Yeah. We're gonna pull you off this wall. You're gonna kick it. Yeah. Lay the head back. <laughs> okay, last stroke. Get it into the wall. Get it into the wall. Fine. Yeah. Woo. Finished it even with the tired leg. Good. Good. Okay. Almost there, Lil. Oh, that left leg. It's the one that's stopping you. Okay. Don't forget, everybody, he's got a numb left leg from the surgeries. He. He was hit in an, uh, by two cars while he was on duty as a police state trooper. And he's now had two back surgeries recently. And so he's kicking right now with numbness in his entire left leg. And look at what he's able to accomplish. If you think that you can't do it, he is proof you can. Especially if you aren't figuring this stuff out on your own, come see me, because we can coach someone who's got one functioning good leg. You can do it. And honestly, you've, you've seen people with amputated limbs before swim. Everybody can really figure out one way or the other how to swim. Our bodies naturally can swim. You can do it. All right, so now we're gonna get him swimming all the way down and back on his own without the keel. He's gonna go back into those extended breaths. He's, I noticed on the keel, he was starting to limit his breaths to about two breaths, three breaths in between. And I really like that. I mean, the more he, works his way down. He doesn't have to come down to one all at once, but if he was at three or four, then he's gonna knock one breath off as he gets more comfortable. And he's gonna go to two or three, and he's gonna knock another breath off. One, two. One when he's com uh, comfortable and fresh, two when he's not. Over time, maybe a year from now, he'll be doing ones consistently. Maybe, maybe in a shorter amount of time. Sometimes people can pick this up really quickly when they're using fins. So I recommend wearing fins as you learn new things because it also, also keep you safer. Whenever I'm teaching these videos online, sometimes I have this, this doubt in my mind like, oh no, I hope everyone out there is staying as safe as possible. So remember, swim in water where, it's, where there's a lifeguard present or a coach or someone who knows how to swim and wear a lot of fins. Fins do help you learn things faster and they keep you safer and they make the whole swimming experience more enjoyable. If you're training to be in the ocean someday, then yeah, go ahead and do some fins, some not. But if you are gonna be swimming in your own pool or you're, you're always gonna be in somewhat safe environments, there's no harm in wearing fins more than you don't, okay? Normally I find my adult swimmers find that, that piece of advice very relieving. Wear more fins than you don't.
Take his head back. You're gonna breathe a lot here. Keep the legs fresh while you breathe. All right, two strokes and you're there. Yeah! <laughs> Quentin has now done his first official length in the pool all on his own with no problems at all. I, I saw no hiccups there at all. In his mind, there might have been a couple, but from the coach's perspective, he's swimming all on his own now. He went from not being able to do any of these strokes or any of these breaths on his own, now he's swimming lengths of the pool by day four. Two hours each day, it's all we did. Day four, he's swimming across the pool on his own. This is amazing progress. Drop a like or a comment congratulating Quentin, maybe a clap emoji, congratulating Quentin on all his progress, okay? This is outstanding. The amount of determination that he came here with is incredible. He's making all the progress and then some that I expected him to make. Come on, legs. Oh, got there. Oh, I thought we saw where he's go. <laughs> now we're going to move into some freestyle pulling drills. Like every stroke in swimming, there are three components to the technique. The arms, the legs, and the breath. We've already been over the breath. We've been over the kick. Now we're going to talk about the arms. Now, the pull itself is three parts as well. You've got the pull, the catch, this is the pull and the catch. Then you've got the push, and then you have the recovery. Now the recovery part is the part we usually talk the least about because it should just be recovery. If that means for you it's a straight arm recovery or it's a high elbow recovery, either one works it doesn't matter that much. They used to think it mattered a lot. Now they don't really care so much how anybody recovers over the water so long as to them it feels effortless. The first drill is the okay drill. So you're gonna make the okay sign without spreading your fingers apart. Just let them relax right here. And you're gonna make the, the circle with your pointer finger and your thumb. When your hands are out in front, every time you catch water, you wanna be catching it with this half of your palm. Your body's gonna be slightly rotated onto its side, so you don't wanna put an equal amount of pressure on your whole hand, but rather try to feel like you're pulling the water in towards your body a little bit. So you're gonna pull in, and then as you push out the back with this drill, you're gonna slip a lot of water. It's not gonna feel very good, that's okay. Just focus on the catches out front, the catches out front. The pistol drill, we will talk about then what happens when you push through the center of your body back through the remainder of the stroke. But for now, we're just talking about the catch and how you catch water out in front. You want to catch it with a high elbow or an early vertical forearm. What that means is you don't want to drop your elbow to pull because it's going to impinge your shoulder back here. Rather, you want to stay on top of the arm by rolling your shoulder into your chin or your jaw and waiting until that elbow is now angled up towards the sky a little bit more. So it's gonna look like this. Oftentimes I'll jam it in first and then rotate my hand. That's, that ought to be what your freestyle pull looks like, right here. So as you do this drill, make sure that you're getting high elbows underwater. The fingertips will go pointing down towards the bottom of the pool because you're pulling water with your forearm and your hand. That is the pull out in front, right here. I see it. Pulling water out in front and then letting the hands kind of just slip backwards. It doesn't matter right now in this drill what's happening behind. Don't worry about that. Just focus on the pulls out in front. Okay, we're gonna do one drill, one swim. And the reason I always do one drill, one swim, I call these immediate application drills or IA drills. Well, my goal is with an IA drill is to help a swimmer feel the benefit of the drill by doing the drill and then feel the benefit of the drill by swimming. If you do drill after drill after drill after drill and then go swim after swim after swim after swim, it's a little bit harder to correlate the benefit of the drill with your stroke. 
But when you go drill, swim, drill, swim, you'll start to feel the benefits of the, of the drill perform in your technique. If you need to do extended breaths on your side, like we're gonna make Quinton do, that's okay too. But swimming with this little inhibitor here will make you feel like your hands have mittens on them when we open them back up. So you're gonna feel like you have big hands when we swim back. I'm gonna do the drill back towards Quinton one more time and for you guys one more time, just so he can see the drill. Watch this. The okay drill, let's see how it goes. Wow. Nice. Good. Head back. Chin up. <coughs> Chin up. Finish it off. Good. You're gonna notice that that was harder for him than the last thing we did, which was just swimming regularly. This is a drill. So he wanted it to feel easy, but he found out pretty quickly it wasn't. So now we're gonna swim back and he's gonna be like, that's so much easier. That's the point of the drill. Breathe a lot. <laughs> Almost hit the wall. It's okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. You went with your nose. Took a big old breath in with your nose. I saw that coming. Nice, good finish. Way, way to finish that one strong. All right, the next drill we're gonna go over is the pistol drill. All right, now we're not gonna spend a lot of time on either the okay drill or the pistol drill because they're pretty easy to conceive, but they're a lot harder to do. So once you understand the concept, you just keep practicing it and you'll get better at it. And you'll also feel the benefit of when you open up your hands again, they'll feel huge. Did your hands feel massive on that 25? Good. So his hands felt bigger on that 25, which is what we're looking for. Now it's the pistol drill. So the pistol drill, your fingers will be like this. So your thumbs will be tucked into your fingers. And what's happening now is you're gonna slip water out in front because these fingers are down. You're gonna slip the water out in front. But then as you push water back, I want you to flex your wrist. And I want you to literally flex your wrist because you're always traveling in the direction of the back of your palm. So if you were to pull back through the back of your stroke like this, eventually you'll be pulling water up and that doesn't help you do anything but go down towards the bottom. We don't need that. So as you pull back, when, you're, when your hand passes the center of your body or your heart, now you're gonna flex the wrist as you push it back to keep water constantly being pressed straight backwards, shooting you forwards. Okay, so the pistol drill, when you pull the arm back, and you start to flex your wrist, you're gonna feel all the pressure now on the inside of your palm. It's gonna feel kind of strange. You're gonna slip water out in front, like I said, but then as you push back, I want you to push back as far as you can with your, with your wrist flexed. That's gonna give you more time with the front arm to push it forwards. It's like an ice skater. Now you'll be pushing farther back, pushing farther forwards, and you'll be stretching your body line out like it should be. When we start to swim too short and choppy, we get ourselves into trouble. When we stretch out and lengthen each stroke as far as we can, you'll start to feel a lot more balance. Okay, so I'm gonna have you start flexing your wrists with the pistol drill.
the head more in line with the spine if you can. Ooh, yeah, you're good. Soon. Going crooked. We're gonna restart. You're not that fast. We're gonna restart. He was like, man, I'm fast. He can change his own course here. Yeah, he changed his own course. No problem. We're almost there. We're almost there. Nice. All right, well, Quentin is now swimming all on his own. Yes, it is still with fins. And a lot of you out there um, commented on that within the Mark video. We're still using fins because he's still learning how to swim. You think by day four, he was ready for the Olympic team? You're crazy. He is now swimming full lengths of the pool all by himself. All right, first, just want to say thank God for blessing me to be able to come down to Austin to be spend some time with Johnny and his team to teach me how to swim, swim better. And most important, just my endurance, my breathing, I'm a whole lot better than what I was before. I was a little fearful of the water, and, but now I'm more comfortable and swimming long distance. And if you have the opportunity to come down here to Austin or any way you can get in touch with Johnny and his team, uh, do that and make time. If you don't have time, make time to come down here and learn some lessons. And uh, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Thank you. All righty, that concludes our four-day series with Quinton. Again, we want to thank him for his service in the National Guard as well as being a state trooper. We hope he has a speedy recovery as he does more swimming in the water and his therapy. You guys watched him go from a complete beginner, even with a tiny fear of water, a little bit of a fear of water, not comfortable in water yet, to now he's swimming full lengths of the pool on his own, breathing to the side, confidently taking strokes, kicking all the way, he gets tired, but he's now got an incredible foundation that we're going to be able to build upon. He's going to do a lot of workouts on his own. Every time I visit Nashville for our for our Rocket Fuel Charity program, I'll keep up with his, his swimming and his exercises and teach him some new things. But I want you guys all to try some of the techniques that you saw in these videos and let me know if they worked for you. Send me an email. You can find it on the About page of our YouTube channel or text me right here. We're going to start using our membership pot each month to fund our rocket fuel charity, which goes to paying for swim lessons in underserved communities where I travel and we bring in kids who don't know how to swim and can't afford swim lessons. And we teach them how to swim for a week. That said, if you found these videos helpful, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free and consider becoming a member today. Head over to our website to check out the next merch drop and follow us on our other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok snapchat for other tips and shorter tricks throughout the week now go get your pair of goggles get some fins and get ready to rock it